started here momentarily. Good evening and welcome to the June 5th, 2017 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, can you please take the roll? Mr. DePerry? Here. Ms. Hendrickson? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. And Ms. Oglis? Here. Right. Thanks. We have a very full house all around. Next item is approval of minutes from the May 15, 2017 meeting. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Sure, that's unanimous. Thank you. Our first action item, number four on the agenda. BBS Enterprises, Inc. requests a sketch plan review for 62 Muzzy Road, Assessor's Map, R37, Lot 38. Okay, would you like to introduce this? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so, yep, this is an application, as you just noted, for a restaurant and office at 62 Muzzy Road. Uh, this is a site I'm sure planning board members are familiar with as it is subject to a, a recent uh, site plan going back to 2015. Um, and there's been recent earthwork done that was in violation of that plan. Um, that violation is cutting uh, a buffer area that was required to be maintained as part of your original site plan approval. Also note that that clearing was also uh, next to a perennial on-site on stream which was also a DEP violation. Um, so the applicants are coming before the board to sort of uh, begin the process of, of rectifying uh, those issues. Um, one of the things that has come to light since the original approval, again back to 2015, is that the stream is actually a bit deeper on the site. Um, this was identified as part of the violation process. And the sorry, by deeper, you mean further, deep. further up into the site. Correct, not right. runs deeper, thank you. Further right. onto the site, um, back into the site. Um, and that was identified as part of that violation process and has now been field verified. Um, uh, so just in, in regards to that, um, I think that's really sort of the stream setback issue given the previous board review. Um, you know, as part of this sketch plan review, that's really what we want to come to the board with and really talk about the site again, identify that there is additional uh, resource on the site, and then really talk through uh, the board's considerations or thoughts on, in terms of moving forward with setbacks to the stream. Um, our local standards talk about designing impervious areas around and away from any natural resources to the best of the abilities, and typically, um, we do that following oftentimes, I should mention this stream isn't regulated by shoreland zoning requirements, so we actually don't have any local required setbacks per se. Again, that's why I sort of referenced our, our general standards, but the DEP does have some uh, standards on, uh, to consider and actually I think what I'll do is um, ask Angela Blanchett maybe to talk a little bit about what she knows about the stream and the DEP requirements and such. Sure. Um, sure. So 
obviously we start with any stream named or unnamed with a 75 foot setback and as we've talked about on a lot of projects um, a permit by rule can be um, approved through the DEP to get that down to the 25 foot setback. One of the things, um, there's, well, there's a, a bunch of criteria that needs to go into that submission and so basically DEP does a review which can include things like um, double, like a uh, double line of protection on the stream. Like if you have a, a mulch berm and then a fence, there's double protection. They also can look at if you have a contractor that's certified to work. So basically making sure there's measures in place to have um, someone who's competent out there working that close to the stream and that can protect the stream. So in this case, they're actually looking at reducing that further. So part of staff comments was really having the board take a look and, and really have a discussion around that because we have heard um, from residents downstream of this site and I know there's a lot of development upstream of the site as well but we heard it um, when the board reviewed the Nunsuch Brewery that um, there's some flooding concerns at driveway culverts downstream. This is the same unnamed uh, tributary to the Nunsuch. So I just want to point that out again that we had that conversation during um, that site plan review and I think this is um, in a similar vein. We also heard from a resident in Honan during the Carrier Woods and I think in that, in that instance I had pointed out that where their site discharged was actually downstream of that resident, this was obviously upstream and so it would impact um, that, uh, that property. <coughs> so, um, obviously any development can go through a permitting process and that's why we're here. Um, but I think we also have to look at a little bit of the cumulative in seeing that um, as you increase impervious and decrease the buffer, we start looking at volumes of water downstream is really starting to impact um, <coughs> some of the private homeowners downstream. So I just wanted to make sure that there's a healthy discussion, I guess, about that and so that it's not something that we step into lightly. So I'll just sort of close by saying, just a reminder, this is a sketch plan. So this is really the start of an, this is a, really what's considered an informal application, but it's really the start of the discussion to give direction to the applicant as they prepare their formal application to come forward. Um, just one other note. Um, as part of the, the violation, you should in the next week or, or so, um, by the end of the month, I guess I'll say, the applicant is required to do a revegetation um, along the stream bank. Um, that plan has been reviewed by the DEP and town staff and approved, and I, and I think that was part of the uh, materials that you have seen. So though the applicant won't have an approved site plan from this board this evening. Um, you will see some work, but it has been coordinated and it is the revegetation and stabilization of that stream bank. So I just want to be sure that everyone's sort of aware that that is sort of the next activity you would see on site until it comes back to this board. With that, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jade. Thanks, Angela. Um, with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Corey. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions. Here this evening representing BBS Inc. Uh, we've been here before you uh, before uh, within the past couple of years regarding the same project as Jay has mentioned. I'd also like to let you know that uh, we're joined this evening by uh, James Yao who is the owner of the property and by Jamie Liang who is the general contractor um, who is uh, taking charge of the overall site and has been working on that for uh, the past year or so. As Jay mentioned, uh, this is not, we're not looking for a vote but we are looking for your feedback. Many of you will remember when we were here about 18 months ago, uh, starting then we get approvals for uh, this restaurant, the An Asian Fusion <coughs> style restaurant. 90% uh, of everything that you see, actually 100% of the restaurant per se, the building, the access, uh, the upfront parking areas, the stormwater management, et cetera, mm -hmm. that's not changing at all. Uh, that will remain exactly the same, or our proposal is to keep it the same. What is changing is a portion of the parking area that's in the back. And the reason, as Jay mentioned, this is changing is because when, after we received approvals through the state and through the town and work began on the site, there was a miscommunication. Let's call it what it is. It's not an excuse. It's just what happened. And that miscommunication basically was site clearing. There, when the town reviewed the plan, when the, the uh, DEP reviewed the plan and approved everything, uh, it was pursuant to a 25 minimum 25 foot buffer that was to go up to from the 
road at Muzzy Road from the street the right away back into the lot all the way up toward the back of the lot to the extent that the stream channel then changed to a broader wetland plain. Uh, this was actually reviewed by a soil scientist. It was surveyed and shown by us uh, on a plan and was reviewed, field reviewed by the DEP and everything was fine, which is why construction started as it did. Then what happened was the miscommunication as far as site clearing is concerned. Even though it was shown on the plan that there was to be a 25 foot buffer, the site clearing when it came down to the contractor uh, seeking guidance from the uh, general the, uh, uh, project manager, it was a go ahead and clear the site, we need to get going on the building. Well, the clearing of the site was fine up to the point where it was supposed to be not cleared, which is the area of the stream. And there's nothing across the stream as far as the clearing is concerned regarding this particular uh, the restaurant site. <coughs> Unfortunately, what happened was the contractor went in there and cleared everything, uh, meaning everything going up to the stream, across the stream, or a portion of across the stream, into the stream area, et cetera. What was done was done. It was damaging. It wasn't supposed to have been done. Um, there is obviously a need for revegetation in that particular area. As soon as that was done and the site was cleared, and it's fairly obvious in the public domain, it's right at the end, one of the more popular intersections in terms of traffic flow, uh, the town rightly went out there and said, wait a minute, time out. This was not supposed to be done to this degree. What happened? And you need to stop. Well, by that time, again, all the clearing, very easy to do clearing and they, they cleared literally everything. For anybody who hasn't seen it, I would invite you to take a look at that. It's cleared. I mean, it's cleared all the way across. At that point, the, DOT, or the uh, DEP also got involved and a project manager came back out. This was now the hot, late autumn. So in addition to the clearing having been done, uh, we had a couple of frosts at that point, which then basically froze all the ground cover, making it essentially very easy to be able to see uh, the overall land, what was out there for anybody who was looking to take a look at this area. Prior to that point, as you started to get further back on the lot, uh, we knew that there was a stream channel. The DEP knew it. Wetland scientists knew it. It got to the point where the undergrowth became not quite a jungle by any means, but pretty thick where it started to pan out into a broad wetland area. The portion of the wetland area as it expands before it becomes any type of a stream is that which was the former Walmart, now the Martins area, et cetera. <coughs> that's what tends to feed the, the broad wetland plain and it just ends up coming together uh, at this particular, or just beyond this particular property. So what happened was the channel was now easy, easier to be able to see. When I say a channel, it's anywhere from at the road of a couple of feet wide as it gets further back, um, it basically dissipates to no channel whatsoever and then just becomes the broad wetland plain. But it was logically determined when it was a lot easier to see that the stream channel, meaning a mineral-based area, uh, actually extended about 80 to 90 feet further up into the back of the site uh, and then coincidentally almost ends virtually at the property line before it goes off the property into that Martins area. Um, and, uh, and the DEP determined that, okay, at this point, now that we can see everything, we determined that the channel goes further back. So be it. We took a look at everything. Uh, BBS then asked us to be able to get involved again because they had the stop work order. Uh, they understood what the ramifications are. Unfortunately, too late as far as saving any of the trees and, and preservation of the vegetation back in that area. And they said, we still have a viable site. We would still like to be able to open a restaurant here in Scarborough. Uh, Mr. Yao lives in Scarborough. Uh, he is a native here. And uh, they would like to continue to do the business here, but understand that they do have some ramifications that they have to, that they have to own up to, uh, which they do. Uh, nobody's making excuses. It was done, and they need to repair it. So as Jay mentioned, one of the things that we're going to be doing right now is starting imminently is a revegetation area of that entire stream. Um, and it actually goes beyond that just a little bit. <coughs> packets and what you see here in the placard. This is the proposed revegetation area. Essentially, um, because the parking, which tends to drive seating for anything that's commercially oriented, whether it's an office building or a restaurant or a warehouse or whatever, uh, parking on the site was originally at 74 spaces to be able to accommodate the, the restaurant seating in an office. The building and the proposed building for the restaurant and the office are remaining the same. However, uh, we've cut back significantly on the number of seats. 
uh, because in the back area, which I'll get to here in just a moment, I'll show you again where the uh, um, redesigned parking is. Uh, we've cut that back substantially, still so that fire trucks can meet the, uh, the curb rate <coughs> that they need to do, uh, and pulled the, uh, a re small retaining wall uh, that would separate the, the, par the rear parking area from the upland area, the buffer, as it were, from the wetlands, not going into the stream, not going into the wetlands directly associated with the stream, but the buffer that's associated to that. So what we've done is uh, shown on the vegetation, for the revegetation, an area that is a minimum of 25 feet on either side of the stream, and pursuant to the regulations, as Jay mentioned, and in his memo to staff, have actually widened that from an aesthetic standpoint to be able to make it uh, conducive to the benefit of people of, of Scarborough to be, well, anybody for that matter, but particularly the people here, um, so that when they drive down Muzzy Road, they will actually see a greater vegetated area than was actually approved before. In other words, what we're looking to do is to narrow the upland buffer channel, again, not in the wetlands, we're not going there, and certainly not going into the stream, not moving the stream whatsoever, but proposing to narrow that buffer in that rear area of about 80 to 90 feet um, to be able to accommodate the parking lot for the curvature of the, uh, the turning radii for emergency vehicles, but increase the overall revegetation from what was actually approved to begin with. And that increase is actually going to take place uh, more from the middle of the lot and all the way up to Muzzy Road. So the revegetation will actually entail a greater amount of planting. In conjunction with that, there will be a, depending on what the board would like to see, a uh, proposal for a split rail fence or other methods to be able to literally separate, not just physically, but literally separate the edge of the buffer area uh, associated with those wetlands in that stream from the area of the restaurant and the building itself and the parking as well, so that there will be no repeat of this uh, at all on this particular site. It will be very obvious to anyone that they shouldn't even walk there. I mean, somebody would have to go over a fence in order to be able to do that. So the proposal, again, is to actually increase the revegetated area, and that revegetation, as Jay mentioned, will begin here, begin here eminently. One of the other issues that uh, was also a bit of a misunderstanding between the GC and the contractor, site contractor, was the pre-construction meeting. That's fairly obvious. There are pre-construction meetings that are required just about with any new activity as far as site planning is concerned. Um, Mr. Liang is, uh, was running the, uh, the general contracting for this particular, the uh, uh, project manager for this particular site. And uh, as far as the pre-construction meeting, that became literally a, well, pre-construction. Before we do any construction out there, we will have a meeting. Well, that's not what the intent of the law is. The law is before you do anything on site, you need a meeting. Miscommunication, bit of a language barrier. Uh, suffice it to say, again, not an excuse, just the way it happened. So there's definitely going to be a pre-construction meeting. Construction did start on the building before the notice of violation went out and the stop work order was issued. As many of us will know who have been driving by there for the past seven or eight months, nothing's really happened on site. Uh, the building was actually buttoned up, but nothing has been going on inside or outside of that, notwithstanding the revegetation that will begin here shortly, according to this particular plan. So again, what we're looking at is um, the pension of the board to be able to allow us to revegetate a greater amount that was originally approved uh, up in the front two-thirds of the property and in the back quarter to third of the property as the stream actually starts to leave the site uh, to be able to allow the shortened parking area to be within 10 feet of the buffer area of that stream. Again, not the wetlands, not the stream itself, but just the buffer. Toward that end, um, I would invite uh, Mr. Yao, if he'd like to be able to uh, come up and, uh, and speak to you and just let you know uh, what his feelings are about uh, having a restaurant continuing the business in Scarborough. And then uh, we'll answer, I'll come back and we'll answer any questions or address any comments that you may have and then solicit your feedback toward that end. Uh, good evening. And, uh, my name is James Yao. This is the second time I'm standing over here. I just want to apologize for what happened over there. It's uh, just something that the GC wasn't communicating too well. And, and for myself, as a resident of Scarborough, I, after I saw that, I was shocked. Um, that was the day I was traveling overseas. I was making calls and to make sure uh, nobody passed the 25-foot buffer, which I know as a fact when we discussed with Jim and also with Troy. Uh, Troy. So I'm 
after I saw that, I know it's going to be a problem, but uh, we will try to correct the issue. I'm not trying to make excuses. I just want to make sure that everything's been taken care of with revegetation, and uh, anything has to be done, it must be done. And that's my, um, that's why, that's why I stand. So it's no matter how much it costs and whatever we can do, uh, we'll have to do it right. So, and at the same time, because I am a buyer uh, for a uh, international company, I travel a lot. So, when this project is continues, I'm going to be stay here more times to try to make sure, watch over what happened almost like a weekly basis. So uh, it won't happen again or in any way. And uh, but that's pretty much it. You know, I try to do something for the community. Uh, it's not. This is a little pet project I want to do. You know, I want to have a restaurant over here uh, instead of driving back to New York because I grew up in Brooklyn. So for the past 40 years, I spent a lot of time in the States, travel east and west coast. I would like to have a nice restaurant and be able to not to travel to Boston or New York. So that's why we try to do down here. If uh, that's possible and uh, you can make all the corrections, if uh, we follow the DEP guidelines, being able to give us the 10 foot buffer, I would be, uh, greatly appreciate it. Okay. consideration and um, make everything right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Given that, um, I'd certainly be able to uh, entertain any uh, questions or uh, comments from the board. Uh, again, knowing that uh, pre-construction meeting, we will definitely have one, even though some of the construction's already started. Uh, before we begin again, the revegetation is commencing. Uh, almost immediately and uh, that should finish up. The company has already been hired, the plants have been purchased, um, so that will, uh, should be able to be completed here very shortly. And the biggest, or the biggest feedback that we're looking for the board is the ability to, uh, having pulled back the rear parking as much as possible uh, relative to the original engineering that went into the site, we'd love to be able to uh, just have your consideration for that back quarter to a third of it to be uh, within 10 foot of the buffer um, as opposed to 25 feet. Uh, which is allowed. The recommendation, obviously, as Corey had mentioned, is, or as Jay has mentioned, was 25 in that particular area. We'd just like to be able to reduce that a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we go on to board discussion, we will have the opportunity for a public comment. Um, I'd ask anyone who has something to say to please come up to the podium, clearly enunciate your name and address, uh, keep your comments to five minutes or less. Please try not to be too repetitive. Uh, and keep in mind that um, we're not going to have back and forth between the public and, and the applicant. Um, we'll do our best to keep tabs and keep a running list of all comments and questions, and we'll make sure those are addressed. So I welcome anyone who's interested. My name is Scott White. Uh, I live at 5 on the road, Scarborough. I live directly across from uh, this project uh, that's happening. Um, I, I and Eric Higgins are directly affected by this, this process. I've lived, my parents bought the house that I live in in 1950. I've lived there longer than anybody in this neighborhood. Um, to me, that whole area is a wetland. It's, it's it, the whole area is clay. Um, I, I'm very upset. Uh, when the Walmart area was built, um, my basement flooded for the first time ever, and along with Eric Higgins, who's a bus property himself. Now, the pitch on the back of my yard to my foundation is at a grade where the water had to travel up my sub pump hole and fill my, my basement full of water. Um, first time it's ever happened. It has to do with all the building in this area, including Walmart, Lowe's. They've literally changed the water table in that area. I don't need a team of engineers to tell me that this is a fact. I've lived it. It is wetlands all around there. The stream that's in back of my house only had water in it when it rains and it dried up within one or two days. Now it's a constant stream 
when we get rain, it's a raging river. It's going to eat away the back of my property line. Um, it's there's going to be a third generation that lives in my house. I'm going to leave this to my daughter. Now, you know, all this three wrongs don't make it right. You know, this, by letting Walmart fill in all that wetland, clear cutting that property, bringing thousands of truckloads of sand, filling it in. Lowe's doing the same thing, filling it all in. I mean, it, it was so wet that the foundation cracked. I mean, I, I don't need to be an engineer to tell you that this. This is all wetland. It's all clay. The front of my property, the front, my front yard, when it rains, it is literally a pond because the water has nowhere to go. It's, they've filled in, you know, hundreds of acres there with pavement. It has nowhere to go. It's changed the water table in that area. Um, you know, th this is a problem I'm going to leave to my daughter in my house. And uh, I mean, I, I don't blame it on these people here, but it's a culmination of people filling in all this property around this area. And uh, you know, if my basement floods again, I, I'm going to have no choice other than to speak with an attorney. I mean, I just, I'm so fed up with it. It's just, I don't know what to do. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jeremy Marston. I live at uh, 15 Spring Street, which I guess is off to the side or back side of the uh, the current project. Uh, my my concerns are uh, the biggest thing uh, being that. Um, the allowance to go with a, a smaller 10-foot uh, buffer as opposed to the 25 is that the parking lot um, is basically directly behind my house. Uh, just concerned about um, headlights and uh, you know a privacy in general. Um, I deal with it on a on a regular basis with uh, the Moose Lodge being right next door to my property as well. Um, Good thing recently they put a really tall, nice-looking fence up, so that definitely helps with it. But um, and another concern is that uh, before the new fence went up, is that a lot of trash and stuff filtered onto our, you know my land, and I can only imagine you know not having some sort of fence um, around the parking lot is just going to add to the contamination of the of the stream. <coughs> Obviously, uh, the revegetation has to take place because of the violation. But um, you know, with it being uh, spring or summer, um, there, you know, there's a fair amount of um, coverage as far as privacy in the backyard, our backyard right now. But in the fall and winter months, it's going to be wide open exposure, and, um, and especially when you know a restaurants in, in full flow that. You know, we're wide open to you know people people at the restaurant. Um, pretty pretty much the the bulk of it. Thank you. Thank you. Corner. I am at 11 Spring Street, and me and Jeremy, we are neighbors. So um, I'm not <coughs> just shocked. When I came home that night, I was seeing my house from every corner. Um, it's the privacy. There is no privacy right now, and the noise. I we just couldn't sleep because all the noise from all the trucks coming at Walmart. Now all the traffic on the other side. I honestly don't think any buffer will be able to feel what it was there. Um, 
we're talking because I have nine years, uh, ten years old boy. They have two boys. We need those kids to play somewhere. We, I just, um, it's not just the vegetation that was at that property. It's the property next to it that everything is just gone. And I don't know. We're just concerned. We, if I don't know what can be fixed, but we'll probably end in clearing just because we are stuck between all that around us. And we don't know how we can fix that. No matter how much we try and invest in our property to make it nice for the kids to play, I just don't know how that. Hopefully, it's going to be enough buffer and a fence, really tall fence, so we can have that privacy. Right now, it's just horrible. I mean, I, I have the access from the Spring Street, and now from the material, it's just both sides. I mean, our house is in the worst position to be dealing with that. We really hope you guys consider that. And Thank I'm you. Not Can I ask you a favor? Would you mind spelling your name for us so we make sure we have it in the record? Yes. Uh, Danny, D-A-N-Y, last name B-I-M-O-V-A, on 11 Spring Street. Okay. The house Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Well, thank you very much for those comments. At this point, we will turn to board discussion, and as I said, we'll do our best among, in addition to our own discussion, to make sure that any questions or comments raised are addressed through that discussion, and the applicant will be part of that as well. Um, Susan, would you like to start off? <laughs> That's a rhetorical question. <laughs> I knew it was. I knew it was. It's going to be hard because I could talk for hours on this, but I guess I probably won't. Um, this goes, my concern about all of this goes back to when we were talking about the blue pups and their proximity to the same stream. And what I was concerned about was the downstream effect of what was going to be happening when that restaurant went in, and I was just adamant about parking. And, you know, I, I, made, a, I made a real pain in the butt of myself because I kept saying it over and over and over again. It didn't do any good, but I did it anyway. Now we have this situation which is sort of one of, I call it a gift that comes wrapped in an extremely strange package happens in everybody's life, right? That didn't look like a pretty good, didn't look so great, but look what I got out of it. Okay, so the clear cutting of this property for gift hall is that we are really beginning to see, not beginning to see, we are absolutely unable to not see what the impact to the upland of this watershed is all about. I really understand what's being said about the impact that has already happened to this area as a result of the um, Walmart and Lowe's and that whole area. I mean, that, those wetlands were there. We just didn't know how, how, how big they were, how impactful they are. We can't go back and take those buildings down. I, remember all the fill they brought in before they did the, oh my goodness, because it was sinking. Guess what? Why was it sinking? Because it was wetland. So here we are. It's a relatively small um, development, if you will. It's a very, not a large building. But because they illegally cut down all the trees, lo and behold, we see that the water is a much bigger issue than we really knew. So now we're, start, we're, we're looking at what can we do to minimize, not, not to punish the applicant. I do have a question about the land. But anyway, that's another story. Um, not to punish the applicant, but to make sure that we repair this in such a way as to do all we can to not only ensure that it doesn't get any worse, but maybe even do a little repair work. And certainly, the 25-foot setback along the entire stream bank, to me, is an absolute necessity. And um, I leave it up to our engineers, working with the staff and working with the applicant and the applicant's engineers, to figure out just exactly what that's going to look like. And I'm very concerned about the um, landscaping, but this isn't the time to be really you know, we're going to see you again. And I will, I will get more involved in landscaping, et cetera, when it gets to that point. But the point right here is that whole thing needs to be completely protected as much as we humanly can. By the way, by landscaping, I mean ways to block the lightage and ways to block the sound. You know, in other words, it'll never be what it was. We can't do that. 
but we can ensure that we do everything possible to, to minimize that kind of impact. So I just want the, 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 the people in the, in the audience to know that we're aware of that and we will address it, although tonight isn't the night I'm going to get involved in it. This is about the setback for me, so I'll just say it one more time and pass it on. I, I, I don't think we should settle for anything less than a 25-foot setback for the full length of the street. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Roger? Um, it seems to me we're dealing with two issues here. One is a huge issue regarding the, uh, the water situation in that whole neighborhood, and the other one is just this uh, the setback on the, uh, the stream as it's been identified. Um, I don't know if – can I ask Angela a question? You certainly can. Is, is there any, are there any larger plans in play to deal with the, um, the wastewater and the stormwater in this whole area, or is it – well, um, well, I, I put you on a spot. no, no. Um, there is other than I guess I'm starting to think of on Gorham Road. We're we're looking at down the road improvements of the Nunsuch Crossing. Other than that, there's no other um, storm drain improvements proposed right now by the town for a capital improvement project. No. Um, it so seems to me this must be on somebody's radar. That something has to be done in this area. So we have had complaints on driveway flooding culverts downstream, and Public Works has addressed some of the erosion concerns surrounding those. Um, a lot of them is on, are on private property, and I think um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a bigger picture um, to look at. Obviously, there's landowners have rights to develop. And they're following, as long as they're following that guidance, mm -hmm. um, there's only so much that we can do, I guess, say, to control the volume of water that's coming down. We can control the rate in which it flows. And that's where, again, we're trying to be very careful, I guess, now with development and making sure. And all, a lot of times we see little things like we have insignificant increases sometimes an applicant will say that to the board. And I guess those are the type of things that we just need to kind of pay attention to because those add up too. Um, and so uh, it's just a careful review, I guess, is, is all we can do at this point because um, they have standards they need to meet. Okay. Um, Jim, on the, um, on the stream, I, I imagine on, on this here, your, the other side, where all the um, – the uh, replenishment is going to go. That's where everything was cleared. Um, yes, everything. Right all, all, right all the way up. All the way up. All the way up. This entire, this is the lot right here. Yeah. This entire lot has been cleared. That was the section where you back here. Um, and then this section, this lot, is also going to clear. This lot is in the same ownership. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> can what's on the other side of the stream? On, no, no, up top where you want, where you're looking for the 10, 10 foot setback. What's on, what's on the, the left? Here. In terms of vegetation along the stream, there is it, is it like it was no, before? The that's the broad what, what about going down? Coming down this way? Yeah, as you get closer to the 25 foot setback. This is where the lower plane actually came down. This comes down this way. As it works, kind of going backwards from the culvert here under Lovely Road, when you get up to this point, the water flowing this direction, um, the channel starts to become less and less marked, and it actually starts to pan out into a flatter plane. And by the time you get up into this area, from here, there is no channel. Just but what kind of vegetation, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at, is above? Off-site, right in this area? Yeah, you know, going down to the 25-foot setback. Um, it's just a standard amount of vegetation. Okay. If I might, just for a point of clarification, the, the cutting that happened on the property really happened on both sides of the stream up to the point 
uh, maybe Mr. Fisher can point to where, up basically to right there. Okay, right. Okay, that's where okay. clearing on both sides and all the lots were cleared, and then on the the, the clearing sort of remained on the right hand side of the stream for the by and large, with uh, limited, if any, clearing on the left hand side of the stream as you get towards the rear of the site, sort of the other side of the stream bank. Um, and I think. From this point. So what's in there is just sort of the natural vegetation, trees, low shrubs in there. Okay, but you're, are you are you planning to um, reinforce that vegetation along that stretch there, that 10 foot setback? Yes, everything that's in here that's in this colored area that you see on your plans will be turned over again, notwithstanding the stream itself. This is a buffer area. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yes, that is going to be changed. We've got a planting schedule. Yes, the answer to your question. Uh, we have a planting schedule that is Um, what what size trees are you planning to put in there in, in terms of diameter? Do you know offhand? Uh, I believe that the caliper of those trees has to be two and a half inch minimum. Is um, when so we sort of so the DEP violation had requirements for the revegetation, and we asked to be party to that to be able to review and um, take a look at that. And, and once the plan came in, we noticed that there wasn't a, a minimum size for the planting, so we requested that DEP require them to at least utilize the town's minimum standards um, with the understanding that the board, through the site plan process, may ask for additional size. Could ask for, <coughs> right, for additional sizes. That's at the planning board's discretion through the site plan review process. So. Okay, moving on to another topic. Um, the parking area where this uh, abutter talked about the the lights, headlights, and things like that. Um, maybe you might want to. The applicant may want to consider putting some sort of fencing up or something to provide some, sure, you know, no some no reduce the uh, you know the headlight glare there. Um, I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure where where the abutter lives, but I, I assume it's way up. Um, this is the, the lodge that we were talking about. Okay. Um, so it could be actually, this is adjacent to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Parking areas you can see in this area. This section right in here is not been covered all the way it was, uh, but for any uh, headlight glare that's right in this particular section, we're happy to put that. And just below that is where you're going to put some sort of a a wall or something anyways, isn't it? <coughs> um, there's a small retaining wall right here. Yeah. Because yeah. it comes down this section. Small, it's about you know, two, two and a half feet yeah. um, I, gu I guess I'm all set. I, I, I think it's pretty obvious that there's a real issue here, that it's greater than this particular development that has to be addressed. So um, I guess... I don't. I don't have a real problem with the 10 foot. If that satisfies all the environmental agencies and everybody else. Okay. Thanks, Roger. Nick. <coughs> oh, thank you. Uh, so I <coughs> there's been a lot that's been said that I can agree with from both my my colleagues here. Um, I do have a question. If, from what I can tell quickly just dotting out a line on my map here. It looks like you would probably lose three parking spaces if you went to 25 foot buffer on that bottom area where you're, where you're asking for 10. Does that sound about right? No, um, it, it looks like that spatially that uh, what I was talking about is uh, these spaces right in here. Correct. In order to be able to maintain an adequate safety radii for the vehicles at Scarborough, the emergency vehicles, basically the fire trucks, uh, we'd have to pull this parking back substantially to the point where you're literally looking at only a, a quick circle right in here for the if we pulled it back to meet the 25 feet, mm -hmm. because then there would be no parking here whatsoever, and we'd end up losing quite a number of spaces, you know, well over a dozen additional spaces in this particular area. 
not just because of what you see here regarding the parking islands, but because those radi the radii of those turning vehicles uh, has to be able to make that occur when it comes into the site and turns around back in here. So everything that's over here would basically go because we couldn't use it for anything other than just the turning radii. It would still be the pavement that would be parking there. So you would be, how, how many parking spaces do you think you would lose? If we went to the 25? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have that off the top of my head, but probably 12 to 15. Because everything in this section right in here, when, when the turning radii comes through here to be able to make that with an emergency vehicle, none of this could actually be there. So if it pulls back to 25 feet, and I'm not saying this is a do or die, oh my God, you know, if we can't get this, you know, everything's going to, the world's going to shut down. That's not the case. But it doesn't look as simple as it is if we just say, well, just pull it back this way and you only lose three spots. We would lose significantly more than that. Because again, remember, if we didn't have to accommodate, this was just you're in my car or box truck delivery trucks or something like that, it wouldn't be an issue. But to try to get some of those rather lengthy fire engines to be able to make that radius curve, it becomes significantly more of a challenge. Uh, we just, like, I, I think it's important that to note or at least ask the question what type of conversations has been had with the Public Safety Department in terms of their desires for turning radius in the back of the parking lot. Often we ha could have dead end designs that could allow for other type of orientations. Typically the, the emergency vehicles are primarily concerned with access to the buildings. Um, so there may be other design alternatives and I appreciate sort of the starting point of looking at that and I think, you know, that's always, you know, being sure we are maintaining uh, uh, access for public safety is important but sometimes it doesn't always have to be the primary driver. Um, and so I just want to um, be sure that those conversations are ongoing through this process if the board is so inclined to be interested in that. And that's a great point. I mean, if, if, if everything is basically predicated on what emergency vehicles can do, um, we made the presumption, as we've done with just about every other site plan, that they're going to want the maximum turning radii that they can get from a safety perspective. But if they're willing to be able to, you know, pull into a site and then back around, and then head back out again, that would certainly be amenable to us if it's amenable to them. So is that a conversation that you would be willing to at least approach on them about? Sure. Um, and then my next follow-up question to the loss of, I guess, off the top of your head, 12 possibly parking spots is what would that correspond to to the loss of seats in your restaurant? Good question. Um, <clears throat> As you're probably aware, uh, restaurant seats and bar stool seats uh, have different requirements for um, a number of parking. You actually have four seats per space or per parking space. Uh, we've already cut back quite a number of the spaces just to be able to uh, bring back um, or get rid of five of the spaces that were actually there. Doing the simple math, that's actually 20 seats of a restaurant already. Um, if you use another one or two spaces, that's probably not a huge issue, but we're not at the one or two space situation. If we end up pulling this back to the 25 feet and we lose literally 12 or 15 spaces, and we can certainly come back to the board and will indeed with that uh, information when we come back for site plan review, um, again, do the math, now you're upwards of 40 to 50 spaces, and there's a certain point at which anything, whether it's a restaurant or the size of building that would go in there as an office or whatever, becomes completely untenable because you can't get the parking in there. And then um, I know you have a minimum for your restaurant seating based on your parking. Is the existing house, which would be proposed using an office, is that part of your parking calculation? Is there a yes. set? How many spaces are you required to carry because of the office slash house that's there? Um, it's in, you've got a parking plan. I don't know that off the top of my head, but um, it's there are fewer spaces for the office than there would be for a restaurant. Okay. Um, and I, I think <coughs> Roger summed it up nicely when he said there really are two bigger issues here. One's the buffer and then the other's the, well, what do we do with the water? Um, and I'm, I'm glad that Angela was able to help out with some of the uh, long range. Is, just out of curiosity, is there a type, and maybe um, Robin, might also, I know, would probably have a couple of questions geared this way. <coughs> is there a type of on-site um, drainage slash channeling of water that we can do to help improve it a little or require a developer to help do to improve what's going on there when they do their construction? Um, it, well, it's really about 
the rate in which you release the water is really how the regulations are kind of dictated uh, for the development. So you can kind of throttle that back um, and let it bleed out slowly over time is, is basically all you can do. Really, any impervious surface increases volume of water regardless. So it's just you spread it over a long period of time. There's no way getting around the fact that when you put a impervious surface down, it's no longer infiltrating into the ground, which is what it's doing today. Right. It's increasing the volume coming off that site. Um, so any square footage of, and that's where we always get back to our conversations about minimizing impervious surfaces, because you can't go backwards from there. It's, it's the amount of water coming off the site increases. Um, and no matter what you design as far as a treatment on site, doesn't change that. It just can spread it out over a longer period of time. That's all. And, and I think that's, if, if I might just sort of chime in, I think that's an important point that um, we're really starting to understand and learn more. Having uh, Angela on staff has been very helpful in this regards. I mean, it's important to note that the, the Gallery Boulevard development where Walmart and Lowe's is, they got an approved stormwater plan. They went to DEP. They went through all the requirements that are needed to go through and were approved, and yet we're seeing sort of some downstream issues. And I think one of the characteristics that you know we're starting to understand more of is through that review process, it's really looked what what the state level agencies are looking at is sort of the, that point of flow, what's coming off that site pre and post development, and a certain flow rate. But the wetlands that were there sort of acted as a sponge, mm -hmm. as Angela often likes to talk about, and so. Though the flow rate after development may be equal to or less than pre-development conditions, it, it lasts longer. So it, it is sending more water downstream. And I think that is the piece where regulations fall a little short, quite frankly, and, and something that, you know, as part of the larger sort of concepts and pl planning and comprehensive planning processes we need to be mindful of. Um, but I think in the short term to try to fix, you know, to use a, a, this very small site to try to solve issues that are from a development that was developed in accordance with their plan, to prove, reviewed, rigorously reviewed and approved, I think is, you know, I, I just don't, there's really no meaningful way of doing that. Now, what there are meaningful things we can do is look at this site and be sure it doesn't add to what we know are issues. So. Um, Thank you. There's no answer in there, but oh, there can, I, can I add to, I think when um, you're talking about these are two separate issues, I, I think they're connected issues, and I think that's maybe what we're missing is um, when we talk about a lot of our watershed management plans, one of the things we go to is enhanced buffers because that gives you the area for infiltration, for slowing down the water before it hits the stream, the velocity in which it hits the stream, so there's erosion happening um, and carving out those channels. So where this is a very small um, piece of the puzzle, it also, I think, is a good indication on where the board should be looking for future, and it all adds up. But um, really looking at enhanced buffers, and I think you'll he you keep hearing me say it with even Carrier Woods, the last um, application that we saw last meeting was, it's really looking at those as pieces to control the water as well and you're minimizing impervious area and the and accumulated effects of what impervious surfaces are doing to some of these sites. So um, having that enhanced buffer also helps with the infiltration along the stream beds and a filter before it hits the stream. So I think they are connected. Thanks. Not to add to the educational moment, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I will. Um, so I guess what in, in uh, my mind is, this is a, a proposed asphalt parking area, right? What about using materials such as gravel or reclaimed? Does that have mm -hmm. a general impact that maybe we would start looking at as a board that could be beneficial to drainage on sites rather than, especially in a case like this? Just curious. Yeah. I Go think ahead. that's great conversation to have with the design engineers talk about imper like uh, porous pavements and different things like that, yeah. And those are really sort of those low impact development LID type standards that um, we've been talking about and, and hinting around on many applications. So, 
Okay, excellent. Um, and I won't take up a whole lot of my time here. I um, I agree with um, with Roger's concern for the abutters. I think anything you can do, whether it's through um, shade trees or a privacy fence on that back lot line, you know, I think that's that's just part of being a good neighbor in a crowded area. And uh, I'd encourage you to try to work something out there. And then for um, just kind of one of those um, the more you know type of messages, this is. I think it's important for everyone here that um, before it gets too late is when you should really be involved. We have a comprehensive plan. I'm going to plug that um, review. Every 10 years we do this. What does our town look like? What is it going to look like? And I think that's a big part of our responsibility. What does my zoning look like where I live? What's my zoning? Because you know what? I might build a beautiful home, but if I'm in a zone that is going to allow uh, you know, a box store next to me, Part of that's on me. How do we look at our town and where do you want it? And, and these are things that we as neighbors should really be paying attention to and getting involved with before it's too late, before we have problems. And um, <coughs> that's my more you need to know message for tonight. Thanks. <laughs> Nick, um, did I infer correctly, since I'm just sort of keeping a running tally here on this? On I didn't give you a clear answer, no. It sounded like you were <laughs> you were kind of heading in the direction of, of asking the applicant to to look at ways of possibly I'm accommodating I'm, that. I don't want to put yeah, words. I'm not ready to say yes on a ten ten foot setback. Okay. If that's um, fair enough. But I'm not close to the idea All if right. there were other solutions presented. Perhaps. All right. Thank you, Robin. I just want to start with um, reiterating my. Uh, support and echoing the suggestions of uh, both Mr. Bealy for supporting um, some type of fencing to address the headlight and privacy issues brought up by the public. Um, and I know that um, Mr. McGee also agreed with that. I'd also like to echo comments made um, by Ms. Oglis regarding uh, the downstream and aggregate, the downstream effects and aggregate impacts of the area. And I'm so I, I'm really seeing the silver lining in this conversation, and I'm sorry to see that some of the public has left who provided comments because I think this is a, an excellent opportunity to raise this conversation of what seems like two separate issues to a connected issue, as Angela said. So I'll keep it short since um, the, the learning moment has, has really, I think it's peaked. I'm really excited that, you know, my colleagues are, are um, are into this water water thing here. Um, I'm going to build on what Mr. McGee said. I think that this project is a great opportunity for some innovative BMPs, green infrastructure, and I'm specifically thinking volume treatment, Jim. Um, if you can't, you know, uh, if you've taken down the trees, which were absorbing, you know, acting like a sponge kind of a thing, you've got to put the water somewhere. So you might want to think about, I don't know, underground storage, something like that. You might need to think about that or think about some other really innovative ideas as to where you're going to put the water and how. Um, I'm if also I going to... Really quickly on that, yeah. we already have underground storage. You do. The I storage. apologize then for, for thinking I was all smarty pants. No, that's, <laughs> but, but I'm glad you brought that up because I, I do want to point out that um, a lot of people may be under conception, a lot of people haven't heard this before, may be under the misconception that all of the storm water is the result of impervious surfaces right. that go straight into the, pond, into the uh, stream. Eventually, it's all in the same marker or watershed. Okay. But there is uh, subgrade drainage right underneath the the parking area. Subgrade drainage or subgrade holding? Storage. Storage. Okay. All right. You may want to think about maximizing that. Um, I would also consider that you put deed restrictions and covenants on the existing buffer that's there in addition to a fence, no so problem. that that is not messed with in the future. Sure. Um, I would also like to recommend that we consider a long-term landscaping and vegetation plan, not just what looks to be the temporary one that DEP has, has sort of talked with you about that was in our board package. Because it's, it, it, what it says on the vegetation plan is that they'll replant 85, you're looking for 85 to 90% survival rate in the first year. I think this plan has to go beyond one year has to talk about what's going to happen in two years, three years, four years, five years, okay? Because you, you see you see die off in, in a lot of these uh, larger diameter trees kind of a thing. 
And I know it is a requirement in our, a vegetation plan is a requirement in, in, our, in our code, and I apologize, I don't have the citation handy like I usually do. Um, I'd also like to, uh, with respect to a vegetation plan, I'd also like to reiterate the fact that um, there's, a, there's a note down at the bottom that talks about the use of hand tools um, and all eroded materials installed within the stream channel. I really, I would really stress that that need is very important in that 25 foot setback since that ground is going to be really spongy. Yes. Okay. Good. And I'm sure you'll cover that in the pre-construction meeting and you must have like been reading my mind because that was one of my questions which you answered that you're going to have a great pre-construction meeting before this happens. <laughs> um, so I want one, two, okay. So one of the other things that I guess I'd like to reiterate too that Jay brought up is the consideration of alternate public safety routing and turnarounds kind of a thing. I think that's an important point to explore. So I would definitely support that. And um, lastly, I would like to maybe put a question to staff and the board about off-site mitigation. Is that an option? I know off-site mitigation is an option sometimes with a wetland disturbance when you can no longer um, mitigate impacts on-site. You think about off-site. So I guess I would just put that question out there if there's anything that we can do on that. There's like in other areas there's there's um, credits, stormwater credits and trading, and I know that gets pretty complex, but it seems like there's, there's an opportunity for some off-site mitigation here. I don't know that we have any local ordinances around that, that's basically <coughs> DEP or Army Corps yep. driven, but Angela, maybe you have more info on that. I think we maybe talked about those sorts of things where we have a specific watershed management plan um, right, we don't have anything specifically, I think, spelled out ahead of this right. project, sure. unfortunately, so there's nothing really that for guidance to kind of follow, and sure. um, so I'd be hesitant to kind of yep. make that up as we go along. And, and maybe even if the off-site mitigation is even in those areas of the stream that go off the property, mm -hmm. maybe talking about just as, as close to adjacent or abutting areas, if there needs to be any, any more vegetation there. But I just want to bring it up, and mm -hmm. I think I'll mm -hmm. make a comment later on when it's board comment period, so. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, and my, uh, my colleagues have covered just about everything that I had, um, but I, I do want to address the issue of the abutters. Uh, when they, presumably these are older homes, and when they were built, I don't think anybody uh, anticipated Walmarts and Home Depot uh, and the amount of construction that's gone on in Scarborough over the years. Um, at the same time, I'm of the mind that it's not just the very old houses that we need to maintain in Scarborough, but it's the houses that were built when veterans came back from World War II. It's the houses that were built in the 30s. It's the houses, the first homes that people had in the 50s. Uh, and we have uh, an obligation, I believe, to ensure that our residents, whether they're living in a brand new, um, brand new development or in an older, uh, an older area where folks moved 50 years ago, uh, we need to look after them as well and where they are. Uh, as I look at this plan, I'm, I'm thinking that one area to explore might be the, on the property of the two abutters who addressed us here today uh, and to talk about some revegetation on their site, if they're willing, uh, to expand the buffer on that side uh, that ultimately would provide them with some of the screening. The trees are done, the trees are down, they're not going to get them back but if there are ways that we can ensure that in a couple of years they have some hope that they will get some of their privacy back, they will have some good landscaping to look out on, not just a swamp area, uh, they will have some <coughs> privacy back. I, I think that's something that we should take a look at and I, I would hope the, uh, the owner here does. Um, I also appreciate very much uh, the 
the owner coming and talking to us. I don't think this was, uh, I, I agree, it was an unfortunate incident, it was a mistake, and we're dealing with it now. Um, but I think there are ways that we can find to mitigate uh, the impact. It's never gonna get back to the way it was, but we can at least get some more vegetation in there to start to soak up some of the, uh, some of the water and begin a, a longer term process of looking at how we deal with these areas that all of a sudden kind of become overwhelmed by the development that's going on. So we need to use this opportunity both to think long term <coughs> and to mitigate the immediate issue before us. Thank you. Thank you. Rick? Going last on this benefits. I don't <laughs> think there's anything else that I could add that I haven't already said. So the only thing that I would um, maybe like to see is when you submit the light plan and you know, your lighting plan and um, some signage if you maybe submit a, a fence plan as to because you talked about the split rail fence that you're going to put there and you know maybe do some fencing across the back so it might make sense to you know we don't usually ask for that and I'm not making it a requirement but that's I think above my pay grade but sure. I'd like to see one I think it might be helpful okay thanks yeah uh, going last does have its its benefits. I think my fellow board members have covered things pretty well. There have been a lot of good points made. I think there seems to be a general consensus that we want to try to see if the applicant can get to a configuration that would allow a 25-foot buffer along the entire length. I know not everyone said that verbatim, but I think that's a general um, consideration. Um, I think, you know, with these things sometimes there's, it's similar to um, big traffic challenges where we can't expect the last applicant through the door to necessarily solve all the problems, but um, I think, you know, we can sort of follow the, the Hippocratic Oath in a sense and sort of go by the maxim of first, do no harm. And I think we want to try to make sure that at the very least we don't exacerbate things. So um, with that, I think, um, you know, I won't you know, the hour's already getting late. We're already, we're only on our first item, so I won't belabor anything else, but is there any other feedback that you're looking for from us at this point? Nope, I think we've got it. We just wanted to reintroduce to you what we're doing and we've got comments. Thanks very much. Thank I do appreciate the, the owner coming in and I, again, appreciate the public comment and hopefully we can get to something that works for everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. We need to let things clear out a little bit here. Yeah. Next item on the agenda, JDR Trust 2 requests a site plan and subdivision plan review for a mixed use development at 25 Plaza Drive, Assessor's Map, R58, Lot 32M. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just by way of background, this item having been before this board at least twice for formal application and once as a sketch plan, and actually the board did a, a site visit to this um, a number of months ago. Um, this is, as you just mentioned, a multi-development, uh, uh, multi-building uh, uh, multi development at 25 Plaza Drive. It's actually required to receive a subdivision as well as site plan approval. Um, there's an existing building on site that's going to be, uh, have a little bit of redevelopment to it, but uh, the larger components are a three-story mixed-use building, which will have sort of office retail on the first floor and residential on the second floor, second and third floors, as well as a roughly 5,000 square foot bank. Um, 
As I mentioned, this item has been before you a number of times, and we've worked through a lot of those details, and really one of the last remaining items had to do with traffic and sort of how to deal with the intersection at Plaza Drive and Route 1, which um, has been identified as being a, a tricky situation. Uh, when the applicant was last before you, they talked about sort of taking a two-step approach to trying to really the, the principal issue being sort of left-hand turns in and out of uh, Plaza Drive onto Route 1, and so uh, sort of a multi-step approach, um, starting with signage and seeing if that fails or doesn't work as well as uh, envisioned, then a Delta Island would be put in place. So we worked with the our peer reviewer, um, Bill Bray, to sort of look at developing a matrix around what would trigger sort of that threshold, and, and, um, and so you have that in Mr. Bray's memo. Um, so I think that was ostensibly the, the major component to be discussed tonight, um, among any others that, of course, board members may have. And then the other issue or question stands with regards to the DEP permitting process. We know the Portland office is reviewing, but we're not sure where that stands at this point. Um, and so just like the applicant to provide <coughs> an overview of that as well. Um, so again, I won't belabor this at Can this I point. Question? This is just, <coughs> we have received preliminary subdivision approval, correct? So the board has granted, yes. So and the so, board but this has is not asking for final, are they? The applicant is before you seeking final approval okay. for, for subdivision and site plan. Okay. Um, and depending on where the board stands, um, staff can help direct you as you see fit. Thank you. With that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay, and I'll turn it over to the applicant. <coughs> Sounds great. Um, so Jay did a great job of introducing the project. I won't um, go into the buildings unless you guys want me to, but uh, we do have the bank closest to Route 1, the multi-use development on the other side of the existing building. Um, we have talked about the uh, traffic and the two-step approach with the sign and the Delta Island. Um, we think the solution that we presented is a good one. Um, I think the monitoring, um, the traffic is great. The, um, the one concern I know we do have is um, from a cost perspective, um, I think we do want to avoid the idea of, of a sign that's framed with border lights um, that certainly adds a, a new level of, uh, of expense and it's not a condition that we see elsewhere for a no left turn sign in, in Scarborough, so we're hoping that the board will be uh, amenable to that. Um, from a DEP perspective, we have been um, having conversations with DEP even today. Uh, as we understand it, Portland is signing off and they're um, preparing to finish up that permit. We should have it within a handful of days. So one of the questions that we wanted to ask the board is if they would be comfortable with granting a condition of approval rather than a consent agenda. We can bring that permit in so that staff can accept it. Um, which would save the applicant the uh, coming back to the board. Okay. All set? Thanks. Um, we have the opportunity for public comment, if there's anyone. Um, I think most of you are here for the last one, so you should know the ground rules. Anyone? Going once, twice? <laughs> okay. um, so we'll turn to board discussion. I will note, just as a as a kind of procedural note, and the applicant mentioned um, the notion of, of um, going to a conditional approval tonight. Typically, and Jay, you can jump in mm -hmm. um, since you have pretty good institutional memory on this, um, and Susan, you as well for that matter. Um, typically, uh, at this stage, we have not issued conditional approval um, we might do that if, if it was at least signed at Portland and we were told that it was on the desk in Augusta or something like that. But um, I don't say that to, to, to cut off any discussion, but I just wanted to put that out there um, just as a sort of a matter of board procedure and, and precedent, but we can have our discussion and see where we go. Okay. Do you want me to chat? I mean, sure, go ahead. Just typically for a new site, a site that ha hasn't had any development, the board does want to wait till the DEP permit is in hand and any other state or federal permitting is in hand. When there's a redevelopment of a site that's been through review um, and staff is largely signed off and if it's still in it and if we have a 
an email from Portland uh, from DEP stating that the permit is up in Augusta, just waiting signature. That's really sort of we understand to be the administrative review process at that point. They're really done with their, their heavy lifting. The plans aren't likely to change. Then the board does typically do a conditional approval, as you noted. And when Portland office is still under review, but you know our staff engineers and our civil engineer peer reviewers are comfortable. Typically, the board has um, done uh, moved the item to consent agreement, um, just to be sure that there aren't any other changes at the DEP um, Portland office. Particularly given that this is a subdivision that has a recorded plan. Um, so, but yeah, and that's a discussion we've had with a lot of different applicants. <laughs> Not always a comfortable one, but that's sort of what we've what we've done. So um, we will start at, at this end this time, Rick. Oh wow! <laughs> Want to make sure you're <laughs> on your toes. Um, can you almost start with the CMP transformers. Excellent. <laughs> uh, you say that you're they right along the edge of the right of way, and you're going to put some screens and some plants around, and mm -hmm. and, and that'll be great. And um, they're supposed to have stickers on them to show you how close to put those plants. But yep, we have it three feet from the rear, ten feet from the front, and five feet from the sides. Good job. <laughs> that's what my CMP buddy sitting back there, so I had to mention that. We're getting good at this. Um, all right. Other than that, you know, I've looked this over a, a few times, and, and I've been very impressed with the presentation that we've done in the past. And at this point, I don't have a lot of questions that, that haven't been answered. And I know um, Susan's probably going to address the landscape for me down the end. So, no? <laughs> All right. I really don't. <coughs> thanks for starting with me. But uh, I right. thought it looked good last time I saw it. And I really don't have any. I looked at over what you submitted. And I don't have any new questions. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, questions Rachel. Answered. Yeah, I, I've really just got, I guess, one comment, and that's uh, the uh, one reference to putting up a blinking sign or a blinker uh, at Route 1. Um, I just, in the long run, have very little confidence that somebody, or more than one somebody, is not going to still try to do a left-hand turn onto Route 1. Um, so I'm kind of in favor of the larger the sign that says, don't you dare. Uh, <laughs> Less likely we will have some bad accidents. Uh, other, you know, other than that observation, um, I'm with Rick. You've done a good job, and I have no additional comments. Okay, thank you, Robin. Yeah, and I have no comments, but I also need to recuse myself as there's a working relationship with okay. my organization. Okay, thank you, Nick. Uh, so, I just noted one thing on here, and. You have to help me. Sure. The full windows. Are those currently in existence, mm -hmm. or are those being proposed as an add-on? In the existing building? Yes. They, those do not exist currently. So they're they are new open. dormers with full windows. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have heard through the grapevine that there are people in this town that do not like the look of the faux windows. <laughs> well, I was one of them for a while. Were you one of them? <laughs> um, I gave that up. And I believe recently there was, um, we approved something that had basically was a real window with a piece of plywood that's painted black in the background to give it a more realistic effect, is what I've heard. So uh, if any of you like to comment on the faux window aspect, it would be great. Uh, my name is Steve Berg. I'm the trustee for JDR Trust that's proposing this. Um, again, this is on the existing building. <coughs> Um, and we're trying to, if you look at it right now, it's a very plain, it's been there for close to 30 years. Um, it's just a plain flat shingled front. So working with Garon Architects, um, they came up with some bump outs. You know, it's a little bit it's a mixed up between a bunch of dormers and a bunch of, for no better, triangle shaped bump outs in the front of the building to give it just a little bit, break up the, the front of it. Um, you know, I go back and forth on those as well, but again, I think it'll just add a little more architectural feature to it. Not, I don't think it's going to really change the whole look of it. Um, again, it's a private roadway; it's not seen from any of the public right-of-ways. So, 
So <laughs> I think it's actually adds more, you know, interest to the buildings. Mm -hmm. All right, I I agree that the uh, the dormer certainly had a a nice architectural design to it. Um, I guess my question was more for this board as to whether or not the faux windows were gonna were gonna fly. Um, personally, I, I don't have strong feelings on it. But um, aside from that, my only comment would be I'm okay with two left turn, no left turn signs on the plaza. I think that asking for a blinker sign is probably over the top and rather unnecessary, just in my opinion. I don't think anyone's gonna be able to turn left there if they wanted to, um, the, the way traffic moves. And I think if it is a problem, I think you're looking at one of those throated drives, kind of like at uh, Pat's Pizza, I believe, has one, right? Where it's just, you mm -hmm. can um, you force people right, basically, right out of there. Um, and I think that's what you'll end up with if the signs don't work. And I, I think the recommendation from uh, Bill Bray is probably a good one. It probably should go through some monitoring for a little while. Um, but I'm fine with the two signs that don't blink and hopefully you don't have to resort to uh, forcing traffic right through concrete. So, uh, I'll put it I'm good with it. <coughs> um, as far as conditional approval or consent, um, I've always thought that um, this board could give that conditional approval, um, but I, again, I, I defer on something like that to the the greater feelings of the board. I think if we put it in there um, that they have to have it before anything else can occur, I look at it as that we've got ourselves covered. But that's my opinion. Thanks. Thanks. Roger? Um, on, uh, I have a question regarding the, the, um, the signage um, directing people to Hannaford Drive. Are you going to have, are you planning to have a sign at every intersection or? Yes, I believe in your um, in the drawings on the site plan. Let me just get to it. We have included at some point. I know we did included notes for S sevens, which were you could see at the end of the property um, S seven which would be a directional sign that would offer, you know, the wayfinding that was also in the packet. Which, which, um, which page are you reading? So that would be sheet five of 24. Oh, okay. And then within the application, I believe the exhibits for directional signage were – forgive me while I look for my table of contents. Let's see. I believe they're in – Tab four. So tab four, um, probably a third or so page in. You'll see an example of the directional signage that gives direction to Gorm Road, Plaza Drive. Um, but we were intending to also add, you know, to Route One, you know, Route One northbound, Route One southbound. Um, from those signage. So where you see S7, which is basically every intersection connecting to Plaza Drive, they would see that directional signage. Okay, I I don't know where you're reading all that, but I'll, this is here. <laughs> um, are you also gonna have signage off the existing, you know, the existing roads that, that lead into, I, I know that building is the primary building with the, right. the faux dormers is already there, but you have, uh, like, the road leading from the post office? Yes. Um, Are you, you going to have signage on that side as well? Yes. Every In other words, every, everything's going to flow towards Hannaford Drive. If you can. Yes. Right. Yeah. For okay. Now. All right. Um, I agree with Nick on the, um, the, the uh, flashing, you know, um, and I'm, I'm pretty well satisfied with everything else. And regarding the conditional, I, I – I sense from Jay that this is something we could probably do. So I don't have a problem with that. Thank you. Susan? It's been a pleasure. Thank you. It really has. You folks have been very cooperative, and I think it's been a wonderful relationship that we've developed over this. And it's, um, it's Oak Hill. I mean, you're doing a lot to improve not only the present conditions, but 
setting a standard for <clears throat> what's going to be happening next. So I really take this chance to say how much I appreciate it. I do think that the traffic onto Route 1 is going to be a huge problem, but I'm all set with the idea that we put up signs, flashing lights. Is, you know, I'm an old person. It would scare the death out of me. Um, as long as we have a method for um, making sure that if it doesn't work, that we put in the whatever. <clears throat> and I think the signs encouraging people to use Hannaford Drive is totally brilliant. And I anticipate that that will take care of a lot of it. I'm very appreciative of you doing something with the present building. I mean, what can you do? But you did what you can do, and I really appreciate that effort. And I don't have any problems with um, doing the um, conditional. Thank you, the conditional. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I also think we're at a pretty good place here. Um, appreciate your responsiveness and kind of working with us through this process. Um, I think I'm actually one of those people who's generally not a big full window fan, but um, I think under the under the circumstances, given that it's, it's an existing building and given the location and configuration, I'm, I don't think I'm going to die on that hill tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so. It's a minor. Um, but I, uh, I do think this will, this will be a nice addition. Um, I also uh, support the sort of stepped, sort of escalating, if you will, uh, traffic measures that are rec that have been recommended. Um, I guess I'll, I'll make it unanimous that uh, I don't think starting off, at least starting off with flashing sign is necessary. I think if. Uh, <coughs> As Nick alluded to, if there are issues, then things can sort of be revisited, whether it be the, the physical configuration of the turn lane or maybe revisiting signage. But I don't think that's something we need to um, require at this point. So, uh, and then in terms of uh, conditional approval versus moving to consent item, I think you know, as, as Jay mentioned, this is a case where we have an existing project. It's not something that's coming from whole cloth on a vacant piece of land, unimproved piece of land. Um, and, you know, we're, it's sort of a, you know, a, an in-between sort of <coughs> given where it is in the process. So I think I'm comfortable, as I think my fellow board members generally are, with, um, with moving toward conditional approval tonight. Um, and we do have a draft motion here, which I think everyone has now. Um, and with that, I will move to approve the application of JDR Trust 2 represented by Sebago Technics under provisions of Chapter 405, the Zoning Ordinance, Chapter 405B, Site Plan Review Ordinance, <coughs> and Chapter 406, Subdivision Ordinance with the following findings and conditions. Findings as stated, they will be in the record, but I won't read them all. Conditions, number one. To ensure the safety of vehicular traffic prior to the release of the first building permit, a wayfinding signage plan shall be reviewed and approved by planning staff, which directs all Route 1 northbound vehicular traffic toward the Hannaford Drive traffic signal. Signs should be located at all internal connections to Plaza Drive and including no left-hand turn signage at the intersection of Route 1 and Plaza Drive. 1A. After full occupancy and during peak travel times, the applicant is to perform a traffic analysis of the Plaza Drive and Route 1 intersection. If the analysis demonstrates either A, that any accidents occur due to illegal left-hand left -hand turn movements, or B, if two or more left-hand turn movements occur during any one-hour time period, the applicant will install the proposed traffic island. Should the island be required to be installed, the final design will require planning staff review and approval. Prior to Number two, condition number two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay traffic impact fees. Number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit, a copy of the DEP permit is to be provided to the planning department. Number four, <coughs> the final location and design of the bus shelter pad is to be refined as necessary with the staff of the planning department. Installation is required prior to the first certificate of occupancy. Prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall execute, well, this is condition number five, prior to the issuance of the building permit, the applicant shall execute and record the maintenance agreement as required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. That is the motion. 
Second. Yeah, um, second. Mr. Chair, if I might make one clarification sure. on uh, item number two, that's per building, correct? Correct. Correct. <coughs> Which item? So, so the here? building uh, condition number two, um, it is drafted, at least in staff's determination, to uh, require the traffic impact fees associated with each building. So if the three-story office okay. building goes first, they don't have to pay the full traffic oh, impact until the bank idea. comes along or vice versa. Um, that was sort of my intent of writing before a building permit. Um, mm -hmm. I can, we can clarify the language or if you're comfortable with this discussion. As long as that's then, the understanding, I think we're comfortable. Yep. Okay. Go to the minutes. Yeah. Right, I think we have a second on the table. Any further discussion? Um, since Robin is recusing herself, then Rachel, that makes you voting member for this one. Um, all in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. Item number six. KGN Properties LLC requests a site plan review for a daycare facility at 79 County Road, Assessor's Map, R15, Lot 78. Jay? I think I grabbed my wrong file. Give me just a moment here. That could have been interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Let's see, so this application, as just noticed, uh, uh, stated, is for a daycare in the TVC2 district. Um, it is also noted that the site is also governed by uh, the historic preservation provisions of the zoning ordinance, as the structure is one of the, I think it's 48 listed properties in that provision. Uh, the site also <laughs> has aquifer protection overlay district, which has some uh, higher standards for stormwater controls and other such elements that the applicants are taking into consideration, as well as the site plan review standards. Um, as part of this review, you will have received staff comments as well as uh, comments and consideration from our Historic Preservation Implementation Committee uh, regarding uh, what to do with the structure and how to deal with um, those type of issues. Uh, as well as our traffic peer reviewer, a land use and performance standard review, and of course our civil engineering review. Um, so at this time, you know, the, there's still some details to be ironed out as this moves forward. And in fact, uh, staff has a meeting scheduled for Wednesday to talk uh, about some of the issues that we'll discuss tonight. But we did want to be sure that, um, again, uh, in addition to any staff comments that were giving proper guidance, and if there's any additional items that board members want to see, we want to be sure those are brought up um, so the applicants can deal with those accordingly. Um, so today, I'll just touch on a couple of the highlight items. I already mentioned the Historic Preservation uh, Committee providing their review comments, and so hopefully board members, I'm sure, have had time to look at those and consider, consider those elements. Um, a couple of other items have relate to sort of the development uh, style in TVC2. The applicants are really looking to uh, uh, augment their de or to uh, design their development pattern uh, in consistent with what the TVC2 district looks for in terms of bringing structures closer to the street, providing for certain amenities that sort of meld the public and private um, uh, environments, if you will, along the public right of way. And so to that end, I just want to be sure we continue to coordinate the site functions with future existing and future public um, improvements such as sidewalks or other street amenities. Um, also were some comments with regards to parking lot design. And I know we talked about this a little bit at sketch plan in terms of having one-way traffic. Are there ways to minimize the amount of impervious uh, surfaces on site? Um, I guess, you know, those are a couple of the highlights. Um, I won't belabor it at this point where there are some more work to be done, but I will um, at this point turn back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I'll hand it over to the applicant's representative. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening, members of the planning board. My name is Vinyl Appleby. I'm a civil engineer with the Sheridan Corporation and representing KGN Properties um, on this project. 
uh, not long ago. We were here um, before the board with a sketch plan, and uh, at that time we received a number of, of good comments and, and questions and concerns. We had good dialogue. Um, we've incorporated a, a number of those which uh, comments into uh, the site plan that you see before you, and in our board in the board package um, or in our application. I'd like to uh, highlight some of those and talk about those in, in detail, but I thought maybe uh, what, what might be good for the board and perhaps the public that, that may be seeing this for the first time would be uh, to give you a one-minute uh, update or one-minute one um, summary of what this project and where it is and what we're doing, et cetera. So we are in the northeast uh, corner of uh, County Road and Saco Road, and County Road is Route 22. And uh, KGN Properties is looking to uh, to place a 5,000 square foot child care center there that would be operated during the daytime hours. And uh, as Jay mentioned, TVC2, we're in a sand and gravel over, uh, overlay zone. Um, and that brings in some issues and some concerns and that we've addressed those. Uh, I wanted to mention that the egress, as you can see on the site plan, the egress to and from the site is uh, as far up Saco Road uh, as the property will allow. We're providing for 33 spaces. I think we're all in agreement as to the number of spaces <laughs> required to serve this uh, property. We're looking at one-way traffic in a counterclockwise uh, direction. And uh, wanted to mention there was a, we talked about bus dropping off uh, students uh, or um, children here, and I think there was a question as to whether it was a small bus or a large bus. I think we since have uh, have, have determined that it's a full-size bus. So I, in my site plan, I want to make sure that uh, I made sure that a full-size uh, bus can get around the uh, turns that we show. Um, we, we've got a secure outdoor play area for exercise and group activities. The site will have standard uh, pole-mounted lighting. In the board package has included a, uh, a site lumens plan showing our foot candles uh, throughout the site and at the property line. Um, we, we have uh, stormwater, uh, un unlike other properties in town. Th this one is on the sand. It's pretty much all sand. It's not clay. Um, we have no wetlands on site. and. But we have our own challenges, and that is the fact that we have uh, no opportunity, very little opportunity um, for stormwater runoff uh, or uh, post-development versus pre-development conditions. We really have to uh, retain everything on site. There were some comments about uh, at the sketch plan, and I'll address those here in a second. Um, as far as what we intend to do, the location of our uh, stormwater mitigation, et cetera. Um, well and septic because of where we are in, in town. Uh, I mentioned uh, that the, the fact that this well, our well is, uh, is going to be a public water supply by definition of DHHS because of the number of children and the frequency, et cetera. And that in itself has created um, a, lot of, a lot of criteria that has been challenging as we're laying out the site. I mean, it, it, at first blush, it may look at a four and a half acre site is, is plentiful for what we're, tr we're trying to do, but because of all the setbacks required, particularly with that, um, with that public well, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but the plan you see in front of you, I think addresses everything uh, to date, or everything that I have identified as uh, concerns. So finally, the uh, site will be set underground uh, electric off of Saco Road, and we are proposing a fr one freestanding sign out on um, County Road to identify the site, uh, to identify the business. So that's really a, a very brief um, overview of what the project is. Uh, included in your application that we submitted would be the required uh, building elevations and um, a colored rendering. That, that was one of the items that was asked for at the sketch plan. It, is, it said uh, it some, one of the members mentioned it'd be nice to see a, um, a th like a 3D rendering. So we've included that. I have a one of my sheets here. I can pull up if um, when we come to that point. If we want, I have a larger larger copy of that. If we want to discuss the building at all, that building um, might want to mention also that that building will be uh, sprinkler can't recall if we talked about that. It's um, and that that is a we're going to have a since we have no public water, we need uh, we're going to have a 10,000 gallon buried tank that feeds uh, fire pumps that will feed the sprinkler system. 
that's um, uh, that's one of the features of the building. So, a couple of things I'd like to highlight ton tonight during this presentation is, and there are some of those items that that were, in addition to what I've already said, as far as that were brought up at the sketch plan, how we've incorporated them in this plan. Um, as Jay mentioned, and, and you know from the number of reviewers that we have between staff and peer, et cetera, a number of issues has come up. So um, I anticipate revising the site plan again a little bit, and I, I'd like to just highlight some of those just so you know maybe what's coming, and it may help with some of your, some of your questions that, that you may have. And uh, finally, there are a couple of big questions and concerns that I think I'd like to, if, if the board would, um, we can discuss in a little more detail, and that would be the uh, where we are with the historic and traffic. Okay, so um, one of the, another one of the many uh, things that came up at the, at the site uh, at the sketch plan, very valuable. Uh, Jay just mentioned was a reduction in impervious. So although the this site plan looks very similar in many ways to what we uh, what we had at the sketch plan. Uh, closer look would show you that we did in fact reduce the amount of impervious significantly. I really don't know what percentage or whatever, <coughs> but we had quite a different configuration of parking. We had two double rows of parking. Um, so what we did was extend it as a, as a single double row and the traffic pattern is a lot uh, simpler the way it shows now on this plan. Um, I think the comment on one of the comments on the building was the cupola and whether or not that really was a was an asset to the design we've we've uh, decided to take that off and I think that was the rec the suggestion and um, okay so we also talked at length on the historical component and of the site it was identified suggested and we followed through on that we, we liked the idea one of the members or a couple of the members had the idea of uh, perhaps or could have been could have been planner Jay, that mentioned someone doesn't matter. Whoever gets the credit, say <laughs> thank you. But talk about incorporating um, some of the, the granite foundation into the site, reusing it um, in some sort of a memorial, for lack of a better word, um, memorial exhibit on the site. So there has been a number of. Uh, and, well, first we're, we're totally in favor of that idea. We showed it um, in our application package and it shows on the site. I, I want to point out where we're currently locating it, but there's some discussion going on right now between, with Katie, can I introduce you, Katie? She, <laughs> Katie's, Katie Norton, the applicant's here. Um, so she's had a, having a number of uh, meetings and conversations, and, and I think everything's worked out, as you see from your memo in, in your package that you got, except for, I think the only remaining issue is exactly where does this memorial go? I currently show it on the plan, pretty pretty much right in the existing footprint of the build of the home building right now, down right uh, right adjacent to the right of way on um, on uh, County Road. There, ha uh, I thought that would be a good idea because if and when there is a sidewalk, people walking by the site would see it right there, and it would be you know right in their vision. Um, there's some been some comment that well, yeah, but until that point when there's a sidewalk, the car's driving by and stuff and it's 25, it's 30 feet off the pavement, maybe nobody's going to see it, maybe it should be on site. So I, I don't know that the commission's given their final, or committee I mean, has given their final weigh in on where they think it should go, but I'd open up to the board if you've got com you know, comments or suggestions whether you think it should be down by the right of way on 22 or, or on site. I'd like to just accommodate everybody's thoughts and concerns, the majority, I guess. Um, so uh, with, with all the reviews and the comments, some of the, uh, some of the site changes that I envision making for the, for the next revision and uh, coming back before the board to discuss these uh, or to demonstrate um, that we've met these peer review comments and questions would be the, the uh, parking layout was uh, was suggested, reminded that the ordinance states that a certain uh, number of spaces or a certain area, 10 to 15 percent, needs to be set aside for landscaping. So we did have kind of just, we kind of didn't have that on the first plan or on the plan that you see right here. I anticipate that we're going to 
we're going to be bringing in the, a good number of landscaping right in the middle of the parking rows. Um, not all in one place in three different locations is what I'm thinking that will really help break up and meet break up the parking and meet the intent of the, the ordinance. Uh, there were, there was uh, one of the review comments were <coughs> um, some additional landscaping on on the uh, northern property line where we abut a residence or uh, resident zone. And I did um, in this area here. The sketch plan just said that we were going to uh, save the uh, existing vegetation there. There really are a few, just a few trees there. So this site plan incorporated uh, a fence. I think a screening fence of, of six feet or so would, and that shows on the plan, would take care of the headlight concerns. Um, whether that's significant, whether that's enough, I, I kind of read from the review comments that that they may think that that's not enough. The, the existing vegetation plus the fence. So, if, if the board would direct us to, or would like to see, I, I, we're also amenable to uh, adding some additional landscaping along there too. So, new trees, fence, and existing trees, I think, should cover uh, our uh, buffering concerns or the buffering concerns with the neighbor, the residents. Um, Stormwater, there were some comments about our stormwater study that did not reflect the correct site plan, and, and that is correct. Uh, stormwater engineer was away for a month, and he didn't get an opportunity to update his study with this, um, with the current site plan. But I, I'll just tell you real quickly that since we got less impervious, it's logical to think that we've got less runoff, and if we handled it before, we should be able to handle it now. But we'll certainly bring the study in, in, in line with the, the current site plan. Um, look, let's see. Also, there the were the were some comment. I, I don't know if it was. I guess it was more suggestion than anything, and that is that we consider changing our parking um, layout from 90 degree to angular. And I agree that the angular parking would give the uh, the driver a, um, a better idea that this is one way traffic. But um, also that. Comment suggested that one that angular parking would would further lessen the impervious. I did a sketch plan, uh, and, and it, that's not the case at all. I can explain that, but I won't tonight. What I want to what I want to mention is that we'll probably we'd like to stay with 90 degree parking, and um, we will through signage, striping on the on the pavement, <laughs> and through education of the parents of the children. When they come to sign up for their children, they will be oriented and educated that you leave a different way than you came in. So I, I think those kind of, those are um, a way to address the concerns about the angular parking. So that brings us down to, um, I guess, the traffic. I don't have too much to report on that. Um, certainly not at this time. These are these are. Fresh review comments that we received Thursday or Friday, they're significant in nature. There's a lot more, there's still work to be done there. Uh, I remember at Sketch Plan, I, I, it might have been Susan, I think, or, or Rachel, maybe that said, uh, I'm looking forward to your traffic study to see what you got out there. Well, now it's there, and Mr. Bray, uh, Bray is it, has reviewed it. I think there's a professional difference of opinion, for lack of a better way, between our traffic engineer and and the towns review a traffic engineer, and so there's some communication and some conversation that's going to be had. And when we come back next time, hopefully we'll have that all worked out. So, anything you'd like to add? All right, that's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone care to make public comment? All right, see you <coughs> then. We'll go to you, Nick. <coughs> Thank you. Um, First, I want to say that I uh, appreciate the amount of effort that's gone into this. Um, I'm very familiar with the site, and it is clear to me that you've gone through a lot of a lot of work to get this to where it is, and I do appreciate that from from uh, this perspective. Uh, what seems like a very flat piece of land that is easy to use turned out to be a lot harder than you thought originally. I appreciate the take of the time. Uh, something did need to be done on that corner, so. Um, as far as what I'm seeing here, if staff 
you know, if you're paying attention to what staff comments have to say about, you know, uh, their their feelings on traffic flow and most of the comments are what I, I feel are, very, you know, something you can overcome quite easily on your next visit. Um, I don't have a whole lot else from science standards or anything else to add to this other than um, I appreciate the efforts that have gone in. I do have one question. So I, I was reading the historical preservation recommendation and, and you you're amicable to what they're proposing right now. This is yes. satisfactory to, to you. It is. Okay. Yeah, so it's three, three key points there, and that is after, if and when we uh, receive board approval, that a 30 day clock starts. That way we try to, um, um, we try to find a buyer for the home that would relocate it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, that failing, um, then we would, uh, they would be fine with us taking the home down and uh, uh, contributing a five thousand um, dollar to the commit committee, committee, one of them, the committee, I believe. Yes. Okay. So yes, we are. That's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Roger. Um, I I agree with Nick that um, I think you've done a nice job on the site here. Um, I think it's going to be a great addition out there. Uh, I don't know about my colleagues, but reading the traffic report is very confusing. <laughs> Um, and that's a real dilemma, that whole area out there, that whole intersection, that, that little village. So I could have saved a lot of space and just said it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all you need to know about that corner. Um, let, me, let me just run down a couple of things that uh, you didn't mention on the uh, staff review. And one is the, uh, how do you feel about the 15-foot uh, sidewalk easement? Well, we, um, we offered at this stage here, we offered a, an, e an easement, a diagonal easement in the corner that would take care of a, a future sidewalk. I, I is, I'm of the opinion and I believe that there's enough right of way on both those streets to adequately provide space for a sidewalk. Okay, there's 15 feet or so on Saco Street right now from the edge of the pavement to the right of way. And on uh, County Road is 20 to 25. So I, I think that uh, our position is to offer t another 15 feet off our property is excessive. And um, I think that if and when a road widening project or a sidewalk project comes, I think that maybe an eminent domain process would be the best way to handle that. And the applicant would get some compensation for that, for land taking. Um, for an easement, but I, I, as an engineer, I feel there's enough there. Na there's enough room now in the right of way, except for at that corner, and that's why we're we're offering that. So that that's that's our current position on that. Okay. Um, can uh, I'm not sure I followed your uh, your reasoning regarding the angled parking. Uh, uh, you know, well, versus the uh, there's more than one way to design a site, of course, right? Uh, maybe it would help. Angular parking, is it not agreed that angular parking, typically often you'll see angular parking in one-way circulation, right? That really just kind of makes people think, okay, you, you, you drive one way, you park here, you, then you leave that way. It really, it really um, discourages trying to leave, although I've seen a lot of people going the wrong way in a one-way parking lot, but usually that's if there's an entrance somewhere else, you know. So uh, the reason I don't I, uh, I'd like to stay with 90 is a couple of reasons, I, and I'll embellish on that. So I think that 90 degree parking, when you have a lot of people, pedestrians walking back and forth with kids, particularly those parents walking into the building, I think a 90 degree parking would give them a better field of view than an angular parking. It's easy to look 90 to your right than if you were at 30 degrees, say, to the left. Now you've got to look 90 plus 30 more to see to your right-hand side. That's one reason. Number two, in order to get the same number of space as 33 with angular parking configuration, because we don't have enough length, <coughs> we don't have enough length here, in fact, if I these parking spaces to angle them, I'm going to need another row of angular parking here. Okay, that's more impervious. And, and I believe the ordinance says once you get into another row, now I need a sidewalk in between the two with curb. And I think it complicates the site and actually is adverse to what we're trying to do, which is keep the impervious down. Okay. So 
we're gonna, I'd like to propose stay at 90 and just through the signage and through the striping and education, I feel that we can control the one-way traffic. Okay. Um, I think... I think that's all I have. Um, I like the I like the way the building looks, the concept and everything. So um, I'm all set. Okay, thanks, Roger. Susan, I haven't been out there for a long time, so I took a site walk. I parked my car <laughs> and I walked around the site looking out for ticks. <clears throat> and um, I'm glad I did because I, in looking at the map and having not been there for a while, I couldn't imagine why you'd want to be there. And having been on site and having watched the traffic go by and thinking, I know why they're going to be here. Oh, yeah, this makes good sense to me. Um, it's a nice-looking building. Um, I understand what it is you're saying about changes you're going to be making, so it feels like it's still a fluid situation between you and staff. So I'm not concerned that it's not going to get worked out. Um, I do just want to make sure that I put in my vote for um, the buffer areas. You did discuss it, and you haven't got to respond to it right now. I mean, I'm just putting my two pennies worth out there on all of this. Um, they, you didn't mention, but I'm sure that it is under consideration. The, um, of course, we talked about the stormwater management <coughs> as under, under discussion as well. Propane tanks. We didn't see anything about the air handling equipment for the building. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The post-construction stormwater infrastructure, all of that is we're still looking for. And again, it's all right. Yes, it's fine. <laughs> you don't have to answer <laughs> unless I'm saying something that's not true. And the additional landscaping and screening along County Road. Um, I'm going to wait until I see your official. Um, do I have your official landscaping plan? Yes, I do. I didn't look at it very closely. I'm sorry. Uh, well, it, it, there will be some revisions. Okay. That's the word I wanted to hear. More. Um, I really don't think I want to go into too much more of the specific details because I think that you're working in good faith. You understand what we're asking for. We're not asking for anything that we don't ask most people for. And I know you have a good relationship with staff, so <clears throat> I look forward to having you come back. Just seeing the um, elevations helps. And being out there and getting a hint for why there really helps as well. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Robin? Yeah. Uh, so I would like to echo Mr. McGee's comment on the, the, the level of effort and consideration of planning board input. Um, I am just so excited about this project. I think that um, you're, you're just you're, you're doing a great job. I, and um, the process has been and has been very positive and um, I would also echo um, Ms. Oglis's vote for buffer areas, maintaining those in the area. Um, and um, just a comment, and then I'm going to ask Angela a question. Um, the comment is basically, we thought it was going to be a simple site, but it's not. Kudos for like managing all your stormwater on site. If, if more projects did that, we wouldn't have the situation we were in previously um, before. And so my question is to Angela on traffic. Um, I know that you can translate the traffic report for us. So... Right? Can you sort of let us know what, what remaining concerns might be out there for traffic in this area? Um, well, I think obviously anyone who's driven through there, and I think Jake probably could speak to the traffic probably because he's been having conversations with Bill Bray, but I just wanted to um, talk about really where that driveway location is and the backup through to Saco Street. And so trying to take a left out of their entrance, I think we need to look at it, and that's part of the conversation I think we're going to have on Wednesday is, is there something immediate? Because I guess to, to Mr. Um, Bealey's point is, uh, I think he had some questions um, about the, the easement and the right-of-way. There is projects actually going forward where um, selecting a, a consultant to look at that corridor mm -hmm. through PACS um, within the next couple of weeks. 
Um, that's going to be a study, which will take another year, and then we'll start looking at implementation. But it really goes to there needs to be looked at at the intersections, maybe additional lane widths, um, esplanade, sidewalk, and grading of that sidewalk. So where I think the applicant is saying it looks like we have sufficient. I think when you're looking at it as this is a project that's coming, and we kind of need to look at it now. Um, because eminent domain is not something the town really looks at. Um, I think it would just actually just pen us in. Um, and so maybe there's an opportunity to have a conversation. Maybe 15 is not the number. Maybe there's something that, that works for both the town and the applicant, and we can have that conversation, I think, um, with staff, too, and um, at our meeting this week. But I, I think um, just in the fact that to take a left out of their driveway and you're in that queuing length, um, to take a left on the county, there needs to be something to look at how, how you deal with that, and that, again, goes with the right-of-way issues. Thank right you. There. And Jay probably has yeah, a lot more. Yeah, if I could just sort of that. chime in. I think, <laughs> you know, what, when Ms. Blanchett was sort of talking about the sidewalks and the esplanade, <clears throat> those are sort of the, more the long-range right. items that are part of a planning study. We don't know if those are happening yet, but, again, this is a TBC2 zoned area. It's Designed for pedestrian amenities, it's, mm. it's what it calls for, and, um, and and there's been some study work done most recently, the Goreboro study. If any right. uh, for planning board members who recall that process that we worked with on Gore, but I think again those are the more long-term solutions. What we're l really looking at here to the traffic study is just ensuring again it's sort of the do no harm <laughs> approach mm. that recognizing that we do have. Um, serious traffic issues currently and talking with our traffic engineer and Angela and others you know we think there's some sort of um, incremental improvements that can be done in the short term to enable to sort of uh, alleviate sort of those left-hand turn concerns right. coming out of the driveway um, that yeah. wouldn't be uh, too yeah. burdensome while we look at the more uh, the, the, the more comprehensive Excellent. In the area. I, as, as someone who, who commutes in this general area every day, I'm actually going against traffic, so it's good, but I can definitely attest to the peak hours and how it could provide a challenge and knowing, too, that your prime traffic times are going to coincide with those peak times, too. I think that definitely, um, I, I hope that you all will continue to work so uh, graciously and, and, and openly with the, the town and staff, and I feel like this is well on its way. So thank you. I have nothing else, nothing further. Thank you. Rachel? Well, since I was the one who brought up the concept of uh, the repurposing of the stone foundation, <laughs> um, I somehow rather feel compelled to find a space <laughs> to put it here. <laughs> Uh, and the, the one suggestion that I came up with is you, you already have on that corner uh, a freestanding, there's a, excuse me, a tree and a plaque to remain. Uh, I, I, do, I took a look at the landscape design and I know you had planned for a uh, sugar maple in back of there, an additional one. But I was wondering about the possibility of putting that whatever you had planned in terms of landscaping using those rocks in a kitty corner fashion on that corner so it would back up that plaque and, and that maple tree. And that might be a place that would, that would create, have some visibility from, from both roads. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that you've uh, reached an agreement on the use of the uh, uh, disposition of, of the older house, uh, as I said before, um, I think Scarborough needs to take a look at all of all of its older houses, not just the ones from 1700, um, but all of those that that take a look at uh, reflect our history. So if it can be reused um, by by a family and redone, I I think that would be great, and I I hope that's that's the outcome. And in a semi-facetious way, um, <coughs> in terms of the traffic, I suppose if the uh, 95 spur goes out all the way to Gorham, that will end up relieving some of the traffic along County Road, and we can, I'm sure, plan on that coming up in the next 10 to 15 years. 
Uh, so it's not going to help in long term. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to help short term, but long term it may. Um, but the the traffic issue is like the issue with uh, the increasing wetlands and the water problem uh, along Mussey Road um, is the larger issue than than just for this site to handle. Right. Uh, and I really like the design. I like the concept and. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a great addition to our community. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Okay. Um, you know, I think I know. I know. I mentioned the last time we reviewed this um, that I'm a butter, so butter might make sense to mention it again. Um, with that said, as a um, as a member of the public, um, I'm in favor of the project, and um, you know, if I was gonna wasn't too lazy to get up there during the public comment part. I would have just got up for that part. Um, but I do have some questions um, as a planning board member and um, as an abutter. So the traffic study was done based on um, 75 children. And I know that in the documentation, it says that that's the plan because of the quality of the care that you're going to provide, which is a great thing. And I mentioned before that I, you know, I think this is one of the only things that could be successful in that corner because there is such a need for it and it is such a good location. <coughs> but with that said, with the traffic study based on 75 children and the traffic in that area as, as challenging as it is, um, and I know that you mentioned the permit that you're going to apply for is for 75 children. If, if that I don't know how we do that from a planning board standpoint, but if that number changes for any reason or if that application is ever upgraded to, then, you know, we'd have to, we'd have to revisit that. That's correct, too. Not that I would worry about the, the quality of the care, because I know you always do a good job at that, but the traffic there, you know, another 25 people could be bad for your business in a way, you know what I mean? So, okay. Um, so yeah, we'd have to. I'd love, want to see that in there. That, so if I might, that sort of um, the the activities that are described in the applicant's materials is a it, is a condition of the approval. So the standing condition that gets put on every plan is that you know this site can only be used as depicted on this plan and as described <laughs> in the applicant's materials. I'm paraphrasing. So that 75 number is being locked in. If they want to change that and update it, then we would say, okay, let's really take a look at your parking would change, your traffic analysis would change. So that is a standard condition for every application we review. Um, okay. and so I know you've been on the board for a short time and you're okay. part of the learning curve, but um, just so you know, and others as well. Right. I appreciate that. Yep. And then the other thing, um, on the site plan that you've provided, I, I like the layout. I think you've done a great job with that, um, both from an engineering standpoint and from an aesthetic um, <coughs> aspect. Um, and you've marked out some trees that are going to remain, and um, I like that from a, from a uh, landscaping aspect and from being in a butter. But in your nitrate study that was provided, a couple things. One, very minor, but the, the uh, address is wrong. Okay. Yeah, but it's a stamp document, so being a professional engineer myself, I'd probably get that changed. Um, uh, and then it um, says that the study is based on the um, 5,000 square foot daycare and a 5,000 square foot um, building for commercial, commercial and professional use. And I know that, you know, Later on in the future, if, if that's something that wants to go there, that would be, um, you know, I think that uh, lot could handle it or whatever. We, I mean, it would be, have to be revisited by the uh, planning board, but is there any intent right now? Because, uh, you know, we're looking at this from, you've got marked out existing trees, but are they only going to exist until you put another building on top of them? Or um, you don't know? You really can't say? No. No, I don't know. I don't know what the, the future will hold. There's some land available. I mean, there's some <coughs> left over. There's some green space left on that site. Because um, I get 
You, in fact, that nitrate study was one of the earliest studies we did, and that, at that time, we were looking at a number of buildings on there. I think yeah. Jay, Jay can tell you that we came in and said, how about this and this and this? And uh, it, it, that would, the results of that meeting turned us towards just a single building. <laughs> no, I, I understand. A better word. I was just, you know, looking at the plan that says exist, you know, trees to... Trees to remain, yeah, yeah, existing. Um, okay. There's no plan. Right. There's no plans. <coughs> um, and then uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, as far as the stormwater runoff, usually my friend to the left of me usually makes sure that that is all good. And I was I was listening, and I think she said she liked it. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then again, if this, I think it would be nice to have sidewalks in that area, so if we could come to some sort of agreement with the board on something, it would be nice to have sidewalks there. We'll, we'll um, discuss that along with the traffic. At some point. Um, so did you say you were going to change that? Is that the final layout for the parking, or is that... Um, are you still I, I, I'm going to spread a few, what I'm proposing is keeping the 90, spreading that out even a little bit more so that I can get some landscaping in, in that parking okay. area just to break it up right. per, your, per your ordinance. So, Jay, I'm sorry, what was the intent for tonight? Is it just preliminary approval for like site work or what do we do? So, for site plans, we don't have sort of the, the two-step approval process that we do for subdivisions that requires preliminary and final approval. Tonight, the applicant has a full application before you. It's staff's estimation that it's not ready for final action by the board, but that's at the board's discretion, but we do, there are a number of details still to be worked yeah, out. Yeah, that's what it forward. sounded like, so I was wondering <laughs> where we, I just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. so in a, yeah, as I said, we, we have a meeting already scheduled for Wednesday, and I, um, so it, okay. the staff's, staff's expectation is that this would come before the board again at, in the subsequent meeting. Okay, and and that's fine. If I, some, sometimes the applicant requests that that we mm -hmm. that we um, del delay the decision until the ne next meeting or two, next meeting. Yeah, I know you're eager to get started on it, um, and it would be a nice thing to have there. So, um, I think that's all I have right now. Did you say that you did that your stormwater um, study wasn't quite? Your uh, um, right. The stormwater study is in your in your uh, application. There was based on the sketch plan layout, not this layout. Um, this is very similar, less pavement. So I think the stormwater study isn't going to change dramatically. If anything, it's going to be better, so to speak, a little le less runoff. Oh. Um, it was pointed out that maybe some of the criteria used wasn't at the latest either. So we're, we're going to take a look at that as far as the latest runoff numbers. Quite a okay. storm number. So we'll be submitting a, a new stormwater study. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I like the layout. I like the uh, architecture. I think it looks really nice. And um, I like the way that you have got it situated. And I think you'll do really well there. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate the public comment, too, Rick. <laughs> Um, I didn't want to keep standing yeah. up and saying that. <laughs> um, so I don't have a whole lot to add. I think, as was just discussed, uh, there seems to be a mutual understanding of sort of where where uh, this is in the process, and there's some continuing discussion going on, and some things to be sussed out with traffic and um, the site plan and so forth. But I think it's all moving in the right direction. I appreciate the explanation about the 90 degree parking. Okay. versus angled, um, and I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. I do think, as other board members have stated, um, it's going to be really important to sort of focus on buffering and to continue that discussion to try and, in one way or another, make provision for sidewalks. Um, I had the same thought that uh, Angela mentioned uh, about eminent domain. I don't think that's something we want to... Um, plan for, certainly. Uh, I think it's something the town would never want to consider unless it was some 
extraordinary last resort. So um, beyond that, um, I think the, the architecture looks great. I think you definitely don't miss the cupola, and I think it's really attractive looking building. And I appreciate you doing that rendering. It's definitely very helpful. I think I was one who had requested that. Um, um, if nothing else tonight, we also seem to have found a location for the foundation stones, um, provided that that's agreeable to the, that to the owner. And, and I, was, I was going to say, you know, I, I, will, I will defer to the owner and, and, if, and any consultation that is appropriate with the historic committee on that. Um, and we do appreciate their um, continued role in this and, and the memo that was provided and the deliberation that went into that. So thank you very much to Craig and others. Um, so with that, I think um, we'll just um, just park this until next time, and we'll look forward to seeing how things evolve and hopefully be closer to approval next time. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Right. Can, I, can I just ask Jay and uh, Angela a question for clarification? Um, that, sure. That's uh, intersection where um, <coughs> County Road and Sanko Street, yep. and Beach Ridge, where they come together. Is that part of the PACs or is that part of the Wait, the you say, oh, what intersection? So there's Sorry, a couple of different intersections. Saco Street and County Road intersect. Does Saco go right across county? Saco keeps going across county, oh, okay. intersects with Gorham Road. That's oh, another okay. intersection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually intersects Saco sort of in two places. There's a triangle that's okay. uh, yeah, And it would include all three. My question is, um, is that Saco County Road intersection part of the PACs program? Yes. That also includes 22 going down by O'Donnell's? Right. right, so when That's we're talking right. about borough study. Okay. Right, so that'll be including a, the signal in Gorham. That's why it's a Gorham Scarborough project. And that's the money they got some money. That's the project they get some grant money from or something. We're doing yeah a planning study through tax. It has been approved. Okay. That's where and we're anything on the uh, Beach Ridge 114 intersection would be the town's responsibility, right? Beach Ridge and 114. Uh, I think it's a soccer turn. Yeah, soccer turns into Beach Oh, Ridge. what he's talking oh, about, that's the corner of Gorham Road, and yeah. you mean? Yeah, Gorham Road, and um, if you turn left, that's Beach Ridge. Right, so that is included in that, too. Oh, yes. that's included it's in there the also. corridor plus that signal because they're so closely linked. So basically, that whole TVC right. pretty much. Is yeah. There. Okay, all right. Yep. Okay. Okay. We can have further discussion Sorry. about that <laughs> during <laughs> planning board comments or, or, or offline. Um, <laughs> transportation. <laughs> <but> <laughs> Right. <laughs> Arts Transportation Committee. <laughs> we have some folks who have been waiting patiently, and we'd like to keep things moving. So uh, with that, we'll move on to item number seven. Toughen Up LLC requests a site plan review for 33 Higus Parkway, Assessor's Map R50, Lot 34E. Jay? Uh, sorry, Corey. Uh, I'm going to recuse myself of next door neighbor's family. But... Okay. Thank you. Okay, yep. Go Thank ahead, you. Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As you just noted, this is an application for a fitness center on the in the Higus Parkway district and uh, frankly right along the Higus Parkway itself. Um, it's number 33 Higus Parkway. Um, a few planning board members may recall back in 2008 there was a subdivision approval that created three new lots along the Higus Parkway and this was one of those lots. Um, so um, the site has been previously looked at and considered in terms of DEP permitting and DOT permitting, I believe, as well. And so we just sort of like an update um, on that as we go along. Um, this project, similar to the other project, you know, you've received a, a host of staff and peer review comments on this one. Um, we think, you know, by and large, things are headed in a, a pretty good direction. However, there's still a number of details that need to be worked out actually had a conversation with one of the uh, uh, applicants, uh, engineers along the way, sort of asking, should we submit for sketch plan? I said, well, how far along are you in your engineering? Well, we're pretty far along. I said, well, why don't we just jump into it? If you already know what you want to do, let's talk about what you want to do. So I really see this, at least in, in staff estimation, sort of an elevated sketch plan. I don't think it's quite ready for any final actions tonight, but uh, certainly want to get additional board direction, again, giving the applicants uh, clear guidance um, so when they do come back that we are really hopefully down to no issues, if any. Um, just a couple of things I do want to point out. Um, 
as we talk about this and just pointing out some of the performance standards that are actually embedded in the Highgate Parkway district uh, zoning district language itself. In addition to our site plan standards, Highgate Parkway district talks about a couple of things. Um, one, sort of the the uh, the view um, and orientation of buildings to the Highgate Parkway. There's um, some standards around those in the, in the district to be considered and talked about, as well as the importance for interconnection with abutting properties where feasible. Um, you know, looking at, you know, there might be natural constraints, or if there aren't, are there ways to create those connections to really control curb cuts along uh, the Highgate Parkway? Um, I Generally, obviously, it's a pretty big site, very large building, big parking lot, and so I know Angela and our peer reviewers have been looking at the stormwater controls, and maybe um, I'll, I'll turn it over to Angela just to sort of highlight some of those issues, and then um, I think that will conclude staff's comments at this point. Um, generally, I think the stormwater layout, I think, is great. Um, I think the concept that they're going with is, is um, is looking at not just putting in a bunch of catch basins and structures in the parking lot. They're really looking at getting that water to the edges and treating it in a more natural or LID kind of way. And, um, and with the gravel wetland that they're proposing, I think are, are some great BMPs. I think there's some details in it that I really think we need to work through. Um, part of it, um, and I tried to put in the memo, which I know sometimes I get in the weeds a little bit and probably lose you guys, but um, one of the things that I kind of struggle with is there is a large landscape island and they're trying to get the water from one side of it to the other, which has some obstacles, obviously, when you start funneling it through a small channel on either end. So the question is really about um, how do you keep that open in the winter months? Um, so it's not clogged and they don't have ponding up on the, and freezing on the upstream side or if it does get through, well, you have a, sort of a river effect coming across on the other side and that creating a, a freezing um, issue. So I think there's some things that need to get worked out. I think the concept in general and the stormwater layout is uh, I'm in favor of, uh, so I'm hoping that we get past those and, and kind of find a resolution around that, but I think that's definitely um, a good start, <coughs> and uh, I think we just need to get into those, those specifics. Thank you. Open it? Yep. Good for now. I'll turn Thank over to the applicant. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the record, David Latulip with CJ Developers, uh, and I'm representing Tough Enough, uh, and uh, the owner is here uh, this evening, which is Mike Foley of Foley's Gym, also Jason Vivatis from Atlantic Resource, the civil engineer. The traffic engineer on the project is Bill Bray, who is everyone's familiar with. Um, so part of the reason why Mike picked Scarborough was he, and, and, and I got to know him a little bit through this concept, and what they're trying to do is like a lifestyle gym. They don't want to just collect a membership fee and hope you never come to the facilities. This is more of a robust they're going to have multi-uses inside to really change. A, it's a lifestyle. So nutritionists will be on staff. They'll have some physical therapists. And they're really trying to connect with the, <coughs> the clients to, to change their lifestyle and really have a, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, so Mike picked Scarborough based on market studies, but a lot of his clients say, we don't have this sort of facility in the general Scarborough area. I'm driving from my home in Scarborough to Portland or to Westbrook. So he, he generated a lot of excitement and said, you know, we've got to find a spot <laughs> in Scarborough. And it was more market driven and customer driven, and he has quite the following. So it's pretty exciting to, when you hear him talk, you really get passionate. But I will warn you, don't go to lunch with Mike because what he eats is very dry and mundane, and you're sitting there with your burger saying, oh, no, I, I should have what he's having. But so we don't do lunch meetings anymore. Uh, the site's located midway uh, on Hargis Parkway, right across from uh, the SALT uh, facility that you approved two, three years ago. One of the uh, criteria that we have, which was a little bit of a challenge, and you see the, the convolute, if, if you come in this way, when we met with Bill and we really looked at the site, it was real important to locate the entrance across the street from uh, the SALT facility. Just it made sense, it worked well. And through our traffic study, what we'll be doing is creating a left turn lane 
and it even said it, uh, the peer reviewer agreed, which was Goral Palmer, that that uh, center turn lane will help both properties. So left turns going into the salt facility, left turns coming in here. So it's something that through this project we're going to make things better by creating that lane. Uh, we did, uh, we've worked with Jay often in the past. We've gone through the Scarborough design guidelines. You have a pretty robust ordinance, including the uh, Hagus Parkway plus the design guidelines. So you can see that the building fronts uh, right on Hagus Parkway. There is a provision in the ordinance that allows some parking in the front. We have no parking in the front. It's all on the side. It's all on the rear. And the whole idea of the traffic pattern is to really have the patrons fill in as they come into the facility so that we're eliminating the pedestrian car conflict. So you're really trying to loop around uh, in that direction. So all the parking, like I said, is on the, on the side in the rear. The actual entrance to the facility is in the back corner uh, or the, the side corner uh, to create, get the cars away from the pedestrians. Uh, the other neat thing about what Mike is trying to do with the facility is with all the different services being offered, the length of stay is longer. Typically, it's 45 minutes to an hour or so. His length of stay, he's projecting between closer to an hour, hour and a half because of the other amenities, which helps us. I mean, it didn't help us on the, what the traffic people would say, the ITE manual, but it does from our facility perspective, we feel it's going to be less, less traffic generated per hour just because the people are staying in the facility a little longer. One of the, uh, Jay brought up uh, in the standards interconnection, and uh, I've already talked with the, uh, the, the owner, and we're comfortable with that, and we'll probably be towards the rear of the property, so that again, so that we don't create a traffic pattern in the front door where we have people coming in, so they can loop right around uh, and interconnecting, which we're big fans of. Is the more people you can keep off the main grid, just just helps. Uh, compliments to Jason and his crew. We, we've come up with a pretty robust and unique stormwater approach, which he'll get into further. Uh, there is no uh, typical catch basins and structures and everything else, so you, we're disturbing a lot less land, and it's a little, a little more challenging to do, but we think it's the wave of the future, and the way he's done it with the lip spreaders and everything else will work, I'm sure, on the details um, with the staff engineer to work on that island. I and mean, the island is there to meet the design standards. So it's, it's there in the middle, so we've got to find a way to get the water through without adding a lot of structures to that. <coughs> on the architecture, what they decided to do for this property is go with a two-story building. So it's a rather high building. Uh, that lessened our footprint, it's a little more expensive to build, but we can do the same facility in all, almost half the footprint. So it's a tall structure, and then what they've done is put some attractive wings on each side, which uh, has some glass treatments, and that will be where the services are, like your physical therapist and that sort of thing. Um, I do have a colored rendering, because I was asked for, we didn't have one when it was there, and this shows here, but it's not part of your package, so I'm, I'm happy to show it to the board, but I'm, I know in the past, it's, if it wasn't presented in your package, uh, I want permission before I, I show it to uh, people's opinions, uh, if you want to wait for a later date for it to be in your package. Uh, we do have some color renderings in okay. here. I don't know so if, that's, if that's uh, if you've Okay, so they did make that. that. All right. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I'd like to pass around, because the, the color that you have, uh, they couldn't really get the dye lot, and it's a much brighter blue than what they're proposing. Sure, we can pass that along. see this blue is not what we're proposing, oh, we're so but this mad. gives you the perspective <laughs> of, uh, from the street view, uh, this is what you would see from going down Hargis Parkway, the corner, <coughs> so you get a big glass treatment uh, in the front to give it uh, a, a lot of punch, and then this is the uh, corner
with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jason to explain the more technical parts of the application. Thanks. Can I just ask for clarity? Is that the actual material in matte and that would be used, or is that really a color representation? It's a color just representation. I get a confirm on the matte and the finish. Okay. Uh, we're still working through yep. the uh, the company on that, and there'll be something we can talk with you in the process. Sure. Yep. Thanks. Good evening, Jason Vafiatis, Atlantic Resource Consultants. Uh, um, our firm handled uh, a lot of the nitty-gritty, the weedy stuff, as as a town engineer likes to call it. Um, so, yeah. Predominantly, this site is all about stormwater. Um, it has two existing, it has a number of existing permits with the state. It has a site location permit and it has a NERPA uh, Tier 2 wetland uh, alteration permit. And uh, we have had a pre application meeting with, with the DEP on both those items. And uh, everything's pretty straightforward there. It's a, it's a standard uh, major amendment to the permit because we're changing the. It had a layout before with some stormwater, but that uh, we're going to change the way that we treat the stormwater. Um, one of the th major things one of the major things that came up with this site was uh, under the original approval there was a pre-permitted amount of wetland fill on the site and as you all know uh, after five years wetland delineations are typically no longer valid and you have to go revisit the site. So when we started this, you know, the site selection and the, the preliminary design, um, we started out thinking that we had a pretty good upland area to work with. And unfortunately, if you notice uh, where the parking lot has that indentation to the south, that used to be where the wetlands stopped. Well, over the course of the years and the last five years, um, you know, as time's gone on and there was some, some cutting, permitted cutting that was DEP approved, that wetland finger actually spread quite a bit in. Um, I won't bore you with the details on how that happened, okay. but uh, it, it created a larger area of wetlands that uh, will need to be filled, you know, for this type of development. And uh, DEP's on board with that. And it'll just be a fee, basically. Um, and. Uh, we, we sort of talked about the stormwater a little bit. Um, because the site is so flat, we, we kind of have to get away from the old catch basin, pond, lower discharge point. It would just create a, a lot more wetland to fill. So we, we spent a lot of time working on these sort of surface drainage, very shallow treatment methods, and then level lip spreader outlets to sort of mitigate all those impacts as we go along. And I think that's... Uh, Pretty much it. If you have questions over anything, or thank you. Um, does anyone like to make public comment? So come on up and give your name and address, and keep it to five minutes or less. Hi, uh, am I, do I speak in this one? You can speak. Right, there you go. Yeah, my name is uh, John Levitt. I uh, work in Scarborough and. Uh, my father and I just built a house in Scarborough, and I'll be a resident in like a week. Um, so I just wanted to say that I've known Mike for quite some time now, and uh, I believe that he will put a very reputable and uh, great place for um, the people of this town and other towns to come work out in. Um, yeah, I think it will be an unbelievable asset to the town. Um, and I think it will be something that is really needed, and I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be. So mm -hmm. um, it's something that I, I personally would really want, and I know lots and lots and lots of other people are looking forward to Mike opening this gym. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's something we're really looking forward to. I could probably name like 50 people off the top of my head that are Scarborough residents um, that are really looking forward to this. So I would hope you please consider it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Patrick Donahue, 15 Coltharp Farms Road, Scarborough. Uh, I'm uh, here on behalf of Mike. I've known Mike for about half of 35 years. 
Uh, I know his passion for this industry. Uh, the best thing about coming to Scarborough, he could have went anywhere. He does, decided to come to Scarborough. And this is not going to be a typical chain-type fitness facility. I think it's going to appeal to ages from young kids to older adults, which I think in Scarborough there's a need for, uh, especially with the elderly. Uh, I think they're always looking for something to stay in Scarborough. So this might be uh, something for them as well as the, the whole community. But uh, knowing Mike as long as I have, I know it's going to be a first-class facility. The prop is going to be done right. Everything will be done right, uh, knowing him as well as I do. But I hope this uh, goes by quickly for him. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Quirk, uh, Oblo Point Road, Scarborough. And uh, to echo uh, the last gentleman, I've known Mike for many, many years. And anybody who uh, knows anything about fitness knows Mike. Mike is a guru in the industry. And uh, what he's going to bring to Scarborough will be a first-class uh, facility. Uh, more importantly, it's not going to be a uh, franchise gym. It's going to be run by somebody who has a passion for fitness, teaching and education, and uh, nutrition. So we're going to have a gym that has the owner in the store that's passionate. So I'm really excited, and I'm pleased that he's, that he's considered Scarborough, and I think it will be a great fit. And again, it will appeal to uh, all levels of fitness, um, from the very, very fit to the beginners, and to all age groups, which I think is important. And uh, he'll have uh, not just uh, weightlifting, but uh, a whole type of all types of uh, fitness. So I look forward to it, and I hope uh, I hope uh, the board considers his proposal. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Matthew Valuris, uh, 63 Mill Street, Kennebunk. And uh, again, I'm here on behalf of Mike. I've known him both on a personal and professional level for several years now. And uh, I know that this is something that's very important to him. Uh, it'll, it'll be a great asset to the community. It's something that's really needed in the area. Um, I've been to a lot of good and bad gyms. And uh, you know, one thing that they all have in common is no matter where you go, everybody knows Mike and uh, knows his passion for fitness. Uh, so again, as, just to reiterate, I know that it will be a top-notch facility, and uh, you know he's really putting his all into this and going to make it work, and it's going to be a great thing for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Sanders, 20 Bayberry Lane, Scarborough. Um, I haven't been to one of these meetings for a long time, but I can hear how thorough you guys are. Um, and uh, it's really appreciated, but I've uh, I seen how Mike, when he told me about he's going to put in a fitness or build one, and I, I thought he was kind of crazy because I think he's got such a great lifestyle now to take on such a project. I, I was really hesitant until I found out that he's actually creating this compound and, a, and this entire culture of fitness with all the additional uh, amenities that's going to go along with this. And it's not like everyone else said, not just your average fitness center. And I think that the location is exceptional because I think that Hag Hagus Parkway is just on the cutting edge of being one of the favorite stops along that 95, I think, once this thing all gets started. But I, I am also uh, just a promoter for this whole thing. I, I'm sure that uh, Scarborough is exceptionally delighted once you get those I's dotted and T's crossed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anastasio. I live on Jamaco Mill Road in Scarborough, and I've known Mike for 20 plus years. Um, I've worked with him for 11 plus, and his, credibi um, his credibility is impressive. I wrote it down because I'll forget. <laughs> um, this is his dream. It's his passion in which he lives every day. I can't even think of anybody else to build a great gym as he has educated thousands of people to a healthy lifestyle. His following is impressive, you'd be surprised. For Scarborough to have the opportunity to build the best gym to help thousands of people, to promote health and healthy lifestyles in every age group, it's a win-win 
for all. I know his work, his ethic work, um, determination, and commitment exceeds all expectations. I know this because I'm a personal trainer and I help people every day and I'd want to be right by his side because I've worked with him for such a long time. Um, I'm really excited um, and I'm hoping that this goes through because he's going to be an amazing, going to be an amazing gym, but it's, he's an amazing person. He will be there all the time. He dedicates um, his lifestyle to like 4 o'clock in the morning and he stays there till late at night helping people all the time and he's just amazing and I really I appreciate his friendship he's a good guy so I hope this goes through because I want to be right there at the gym helping him succeed so thank you thank you Anyone else? All right, well, we appreciate all that feedback. Thank you very much. Um, and we will turn to board discussion. Uh, Robin, would you like to start off? Do you have anything? Sounds good. Um, have some, I guess, first I'll, I'll ask a question of you, Jay. What year was the parcel permitted with DEP? <coughs> I uh, believe it. So, well, Com 2008 is when the subdivision That's was approved. That's what I thought you said. Okay. The subdivision approval, however, required that, and I think I put it in my comments, and if I didn't, I'll apologize, okay. but the, the subdivision approval required that prior to any building occurring, the DEP permit needed to be uh, submitted. Okay. Um, so, little bit of history, and I see the property owners here who sort of went through the original subdivision uh, process. As I noted, this is lot number 10 of a subdivision, of a three-lot subdivision. Well, how do you get number 10 out of a three-lot <laughs> subdivision? There was a much bigger plan, obviously. I, I think it might have been even 12 lots potentially at that time. Mm -hmm. However, because of some of the wetland impacts and some of the state permitting issues, the applicant decided to move forward with only a certain phase of the subdivision approval at that time, um, just due to a host of reasons. Anyway, um, so their subdivision approval was in 08. The question about when their DEP permit, so that, that's kind of the question we still have. And, and as part of this process, we'll really start to uncover okay. exactly where that stands, what does or doesn't need to get updated, and it sounds like we obviously now realize there's a bit more wetlands on the site than maybe was there the 10 years ago or nine years ago, and yep. um, those are all issues to be worked through. So. so great segue. That's my next question, so I'm not sure who's going to talk about wetlands impacts. Um, I noticed that the wetlands survey was done in April 2017, which um, is the spring right after a drought season. So if you've seen wetland impacts, um, just from that sort of what I'm going to call a cursory review in April 2017, knowing that there may have still been, you know, some some snow cover conditions still um, of it, uh, potentially observable on the land. I'm I'm going to suggest that maybe a wetland peer review be considered for this um, parcel for a number of reasons. Um, mainly because of the large impacts to stormwater, I, I, I'm sorry, to wetlands. It was over 20,000 square feet, was it estimated? And that's, that's you know, tier two Army Corps permit territory. So um, I think it's important to have a peer review, but also um, um, did they, did the wetland survey, I didn't see anything in there talking about whether or not they were looking for vernal pools, Jason. Can you speak to that at all? Uh, yes, I can. Um, there, there were no vernal pools found on the site during the, the they were not identified as potential uh, mm -hmm. vernal pools and I think we did do, um, Jim Logan of Longview Partners did the wetland delineation in the site visits and there was nothing, um, he did the walkthrough, you know, where they, they listen by the years, we've had him doing a lot of work down in that area and uh, if there's nothing in your packet he will sign off that, that there are no potential. And he's a licensed wetland? Yes. Um, Scientist, okay. Yes. 
So I would still prefer at this point due to the, the large aggregate impacts and the time of year after a drought year that, that um, the, the planning board and staff maybe consider a, a wetland peer review. Um, um, can you talk to me? I'm not sure if it's you or the develop, CJ developers um, about um, the timing of construction and particularly if there's any idea yet when it will, when the sequencing of events will happen, primarily be due to um, two things, uh, environmentally sensitive areas in the site and also uh, if there's a contractor that's been identified and how unsuitable soils will be handled. We haven't identified a, a contractor yet because we've, we've still got to go through the approval process. Uh, the goal is to do the permitting and approvals through the summer for the fall construction okay. when it does dry out. Uh, but we have SW Cole as a geotechnical engineer uh, uh, that's already been retained and they're going to be doing the studies on that. And um, I, I think due to the environmentally sensitive areas, we may want to consider having a qualified third party inspector there, whether it's you know working for us or for if DEP will need it. Um, and can you speak to the unsuitable soils, meaning you're going to have a lot of, uh, you know, this is a wetland area, so the soils are going to be not construction grade. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with them? Uh, we haven't gone to that okay. level of detail on, on that, but we will. And okay. uh, we'll do the pre-construction meeting with the city and with the town. Yep. And then uh, we have our engineer on site at least once a week certifying on erosion control and on that. But we'll make sure that's covered. Because what I'm getting at um, is, is it Mike? David. David. So what I'm getting at is you're going to, you're going to, I, I would imagine in that area you're going to dig up a lot of those clay yep. and that's not going to be good for your foundation so yep. they've got to go somewhere off, yep. you know, off yep. site kind of a thing. And we want to make sure that they're not filling in more wetlands no, kind of a thing. No, they're, okay. they're not going to go on site. We're not taking that unsuitable and putting it someplace else on site. Okay, and then and with that much, you know, potential amount to move from the site to where that's going to go, you should definitely share that with yep. staff. Yep. The yeah, well, that's one of the reasons for that stormwater system. So in the building footprint, instead of having a one-story building, we went two to yep. reduce the amount of, and we don't have to go as deep. So you don't have to dig the deep holes right. to bring the structures in and then pipe them. Yep. So I, I think that's what the whole process was. Right. How can we stay high <coughs> on that site so we don't have to dig? Yeah, it's going to be really challenging. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm really excited about the project. And just with the level of enthusiasm and the room for the project, it's you know, hard not to be excited about this project. Well, I'll tell you is, and, and Jason, I won't use the, the words he used when we got the wetland survey, because <laughs> our first plan, I mean, we nipped a little corner mm -hmm. of wetland here, and we did so mm -hmm. well to stay away from it, and that was the approved plan, and we thought, oh, this is, yeah. let's behave within the lines, mm -hmm. and then because of the forestation and that it's not good quality wetland, but it, mm -hmm. it allowed it, you take the big trees, you allow the, the, the the plants that do well in hydric soils are yeah. the ones there, and the big trees that absorb the soils aren't there anymore. So it's not good, like the Army said, it's not good quality wetland, but you allowed it to creep in that it wasn't there six, seven years ago. Well, and, and again, I'm going to bring this comment up during the public planning board comment meetings. It's our designated growth areas are in these environmental sensitive areas yeah. that are abutting or close to, proximate to the Scarborough yeah. Marsh which is environmentally and ecologically valuable. Yeah, and that's why we're trying to keep our footprint to that three acres out of the eight acre site and try to keep it close to the street. But we didn't, we really didn't need that finger to just yeah. pop up at the yeah. end of the design. Yeah, no, and I appreciate the, the, the forthright yeah. and honesty in, in dealing with that. And I encourage you to just continue to use the staff as a resource. Oh, they've been fabulous. Great, and work with you on that, thanks. And then um, I guess I, I just have a comment on the erosion and sedimentation control details. Um, we want to just check on your sheet C300 there. It looks like we're referencing an old version of the DEP manual, so be careful there, and which, which means just continue to that care and caution throughout the stormwater and um, erosion and sedimentation control as you go. And I love, love, love all the BMPs that you have going on there and just trying to maintain sheet flow 
instead of channeling everything into different places. So keep up the good work there. I'm done. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Rachel. Thank you. Um, I'm relatively new to Scarborough, so uh, I don't know Mr. Foley. And I was wondering if he could, either if he's here, if he could raise his hand or stand up. Oh, nice to meet you, you sir. And I compliment you on the loyalty and the enthusiasm of the folks that you've worked with. I appreciate their coming here uh, to testify on your behalf. Uh, since I live half a mile away up Scotto Hill, I'm also enthusiastic about the idea of having uh, this sort of a facility in the area. I did notice uh, a couple of things that uh, I want to address. And one, several places you reference a 35,000 square foot building. But I noticed under your correspondence with the utilities, the letter that you sent to the means group for the Portland Water District only referenced 30,000 square feet. And I don't know if that makes a well, difference well, or a change or? I'm not sure. The 35,000 is the two-story. So that includes the second story. But we'll make sure that we correct that with the Portland Water District. And yeah. Make sure they don't yeah, because 5,000 square feet differences. Yeah. I mean, they're going to look at the bathroom count. I mean, because it's really the only water we're using is for the, the showers and, and the restrooms. So No indoor swimming pool? No indoor swimming pool, no big restaurant. So. All right. Um, I need, there were a couple of comments about the uh, building facade as it yeah. faced Tigers Parkway, and I, I don't know what quite bothers me about it, but I'm, I am a little bothered by it. It's kind of blocky, it's kind of plain, and I, I would appreciate it if you would take a look and see if there is some more interest. Yeah, we're going to do some of that with there. colors and some textures. One of the reasons for using the metal building is you need that open floor plan to for the, the visibility and, and to do, they do a lot of fitness, so there's <laughs> a lot of running back and forth, so having columns and doing a, a flat roof sort of thing didn't really mm -hmm. fit. Hey, my honest opinion, and I think we can do something. When I looked at it, it kind of had a, it reminded me of the barn where you had the A-frame coming and then the, where he would store his hay and then on the side is where the animals would stay. So <laughs> we're trying to have a little bit of that atmosphere, but it's, it's the building structure is there because of its purpose and needing the open floor plan. So thank you. And thank we'll, you. We'll make it more interesting. Good. Thank you. All set? Thanks. Um, yeah, I think overall, from what I have in front of me, it looks good, and I think that it's a great, a great addition to that area. Um, I think the 30,000 square foot thing, I was looking at that too, is mostly in the Atlantic Resource mm -hmm. documentation. Um, keep references, references 30,000 square feet, unless not that it's a big deal. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll clean that up. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea for the area, and I, and I think the design looks really neat. Um, and I'm sure that between Angela and um, the other ladies here for the stormwater figured out. So uh, I think it looks good. I don't have anything else to say on that. Thanks. Roger? Um, just go over a couple of things that are on the um, in these documents. The um, on the landscaping on the 25 foot buffer yeah. along the parkway. On your rendering right there, the bottom one is the one that's facing the parkway. Is that correct? Yeah, that's an artist rendering. So I don't don't that. don't go by that. That does I, uh, that's well, the, they put a few. Uh, um, so what's your question I'm on? I'm looking the, at this here. Okay. And I don't see. I don't see a lot of uh, uh, right there. Oh, oh. 
Yes, so the Highest Parkway District has a certain buffering requirement from the from the property. So yeah. we'll just look for the applicant's plans to be sure they demonstrate that accurately. Okay, but we want it nicely landscaped, not right? just in the buffer. All right. Well, it does talk about maintaining natural vegetation and then augmenting that with additional landscaping as well. Okay. Um, so I think you know uh, the the across the, the business across the street is a pretty good. Um, sort of indicator of what the standards sort of call for, but they, it's pretty pretty specific what it asks for, and so I'm sure the applicants will look at that and yeah, deal and with it, it accordingly. It, and I think part of what that is is it's right now it's fairly well, I wouldn't say landscape because it's not landscape, but there are a lot of trees on that corridor, and so it might be a situation where we look at it, maybe selectively remove some ones that don't look so good and, 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 and buffer that up with with other things. We'll take a look at that. Okay. The, the other thing was on the um, connectivity with uh, future property. How do you feel about that? Are you We're in agreement, and I'll show you what okay. would be to have the uh, the connectivity so that it goes around the perimeter and not at the front door where okay. pedestrians are. But interconnecting is something we're supposed to Okay. I mean, I think it's it's a good project, too. And I think you've done it. Generally, you've done a very nice job. So looking forward to seeing it. Can you come back? And more stuff? Thanks. Susan. I am tired. Um. <laughs> Congratulations, you chose a good town. I'm really glad we're getting this on the Highest Parkway. I'm sure it'll be outstanding. We've been waiting a long time for really quality things to come to. And it interests me that we started with salt pump, and now we've got a gym. It's wonderful. Um, I'm not going to go through all of this because it's, you know, I mean, you, I'm sure that the engineers and the staff will go through and figure out what to do with all this. I am interested in the um, piece about when all that stuff comes down from the Highest Parkway to the entrance, and then you were just mentioning it, okay, so there's a lot of trees and so on where the driveway will go, <coughs> and when that gets cleared out, that's going to be a lot of the uh, presence on the parkway is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in the introductory presence of the building from the Highest Parkway. So maybe even a um, sidewalk. Okay. You know, you get to the point where you're going to be giving us some kind of a landscape plan for it. <coughs> Might be a time for us either before or whatever to go take a not a not a whole necessarily trip around the whole lot. It's just that particular piece which really interests me a lot. Yeah. Well, you're really going to see it if you're coming from the, the highway. You're not mm -hmm. going to see it that much because it'll all be back to your shoulder. It's going to be coming from Route One. Well, that's my concern. So how we can yep. keep some of that natural and, and really... As much as possible, because that's the joy of the Highest Parkway. We don't want to do anything to, you know, get in there and muck around with the overall impact of it. And then the building. Don't look like no bond to me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I think that the important thing is the last page of the Boral Palmer comments, if, I, if you don't mind. Um, an applicant should review and consider compliance with the design standards in terms of both facade materials as well as variations in the facade and wall. Those are the operative words. Variations yep. in facade and wall. In particular, the standards require 100 feet or greater wall length to be broken up and varied by projections and recesses, not just windows. Yep. Okay? Um, extending at least 20% of the length of the facade. This is to break up the mass of the facade and add scale and interest. It should be noted that the design standards do allow metal panels and aluminum siding in the HP if the design otherwise meets the standards. So consideration should be given for how this design complies with, with other architectural refinements that, that may be necessary, such as window trim, roof overhangs, facade variations, and other New England architectural vernacular. Okay? Because I like the color. Size is cool. I like the two stories. But it is boring. Yeah. It needs to have 
bunch of this added to it, and I'm sure that people are more than up to it. So I'm sure you're going to be here, so I'm not going to say welcome yet, but we're really tickled that you're coming, and thank you all for coming out and discussing us. Appreciate it. And, and as a developer, I'd like to compliment the members of the public. To have people show up to yeah. speak in favor of anything yeah. is a big deal, and at 10 o'clock at night. So <coughs> you're doing something right, Mike, because oh. these, these people yeah. came out on their own. I've been doing this for a very long time, and this is the first time this has ever happened in my in my tenure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, there's certainly built-in constituency for this, and again, we really appreciate the, the input from the public. Um, and it is nice to hear and positive things about projects. Does it happen often enough? Yeah. Um, so uh, piggybacking and sort of building on what Ms. Oglis said, um, and they alluded to this as well, I think, you know, it's right there, and it's a great uh, example of sort of um, an approach to forming those design standards with sort of an unusual building type, and they face some of the same challenges they face in terms of being needed a lot of, of blank wall space because they literally had to have climbing all surfaces. It's, that was a bit of a process we went through with them, and if you haven't spoken with them already, um, I'm sure they regale you with stories I think about I was that, sitting here when we were doing yeah. the, the Irving project. <laughs> so, but I think, as is often the case with the process at the end of the day, I think I hope they would agree with us that, that the outcome was excellent and it's been a real asset to Haggis Parkway, and I think it's sitting in a way that the project directly with that, um, and I guess that segues to kind of the site layout, and I like the fact that that's, that's the plan for that alignment. Um, also building on what Susan said, um, I think it'll be really important to continue to find shooting the architecture, um, particularly that, that view quarter from Haggis Parkway, so as you're, as you're coming from Holy Donut on the way to the gym. <laughs> on the way to the work out. <laughs> or just driving by the gym. Um, <coughs> uh, 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 through there. Um, and site walks may be helpful. It also might be helpful to include two perspectives. Next, I can sort of show with that, that perspective. Um, mm -hmm. I've talked about stormwater. Um, really, some have challenges there, but it seems like you're having the right conversations and, and confident that can get worked out. Um, suffering, of course, is important. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to really favor there, but hopefully that's useful feedback for you. And um, is there anything else? One quick question, probably shouldn't be asking it. What's causing some of the concern on the stormwater is the island, and that's a requirement on right. so many spaces. Is there a way to make that a, a non-curved island or like all, something so the, the water can go through it? And I will. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'll leave that to. Yeah, I'm, try, I'm thinking of a creative way to meet the I'm requirement, but I'm also sure. allow the, yeah. the good systems to, to work. I would sure hope that after that. That's the best. But uh, <coughs> that'll be part of the homework, I guess. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. Tori, if I could just ask a quick question of the board. I heard SiteWalk mentioned a few times, and it seems like that discussion was really referenced around the view from Haggis Parkway. Have a good render. Is that a site visit that we'd want to do as a group, or is that sort of a windshield inspection that planning board members feel they could drive by park? take a look at. I just want to be sure I'm clear on I what the an expectation is. My sense is. is we might even be able to do photographs. Yeah, we could do yeah. photographs. And the other thing we could do, we couple of what Jay says on the drive-by, we'll, we'll take it and we'll put some sort of sign that is a proximate corridor. As you're driving by, you'll get a frame of reference. That would be helpful. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. As long as we have something. Uh, something to flag uh, uh, so when you drive by. I don't encourage anyone for in this tick season to go for a tight walk. Thank you. All right.
Karen's working on the white noise machine. <laughs> Just hold that right there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll let the... We'll let the... Is <laughs> that shutting off the handheld, Karen? toward the witching hour, so we're going to try and tee up this next item here and keep moving yeah. so we can get everybody home. So the next item, uh, Contour Properties LLC requests a site plan review for 8 Science Park Road, Assessor's Map R77, Lot 3B. We just ask folks to, uh, we still have another item to cover here, so we just ask folks to <laughs> shooing them away. Yeah, moving on out. Thank you. <laughs> you we could count on yeah. Susan to <laughs> do some crowd control. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll repeat the, the item. Uh, Contour Properties LLC requests a site plan review for 8 Science Park Road, Assessor's Map, R77, Lot 3B. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so as you just mentioned, this is a site plan amendment. So the, the site has an existing building. Actually, there's two existing buildings on the site. The applicant's looking to expand um, one of the buildings uh, within its same footprint uh, through some additions. And predominantly, we're looking at uh, an expansion of the parking uh, area on the site. Um, the application is in the BOR, Business Office Residential Zoning District, and the board will be reviewing this through the site plan review um, standard. Um, on this one, you will receive uh, peer review comments for land use and performance standards comments, um, comments from Woodard and Kern, as well as from Goral Palmer related to traffic um, items. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you and the applicant. All right, and I'll hand it over to the applicant's team. Hi, folks. Okay. Mike Tadema Wieland. I'm an engineer with Teradon Consultants. I'm here on behalf of Contour Properties. Uh, I promise these guys are as great as the <laughs> last <laughs> time. <laughs> too late to get everyone out, you know. What I mean? uh, as Jay pointed out, we're here for site plan approval for uh, 8 Science Park Road. <coughs> this is the former site of the foundation for blood research. The site's about 2.7 acres in size, and it's in the business office research zone. I think Jay mentioned residential, business office research. research. Uh, it, the two buildings on site, uh, Footprint-wise, anyways, are 9,500 square feet is the main building, and then there's a, a, a maintenance building that's 1,200 square feet. Uh, there are currently 44 parking spaces on the site. This is lot two of uh, Science Park subdivision, which was origi originally approved in 1978. Uh, I believe this site was developed in about 1980. <coughs> Uh, the applicants actually purchased lots two through six from the Foundation for Blood Research last September. Lot one, which is the site uh, immediately to the south, is, a, is owned by others. It's, um, uh, it's an operating doctor's office, so not, not under the control of the applicant. Uh, so the, the intent now, right now for the applicant is to renovate this existing building, make the site improvements we're proposing and, and get a tenant uh, or several tenants in there uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, but we, we do want to share with you tonight um, sort of plans for the, the remaining land. The, in total, the applicant owns about uh, 13 acres. And again, this is sort of redevelopment improvements to, to an existing facility. But uh, we just for context, um, we wanted to share sort of what what future plans um, the applicant has for the site. So, in this this isn't in your packets, just sort of for information only. Um, the dark outline is 
the property owned by the applicant. Uh, lots two through six of Science Park subdivision. This is lot one right here. The Scarborough connector is to the west, and Route One is to the east. Science Park Road comes from Route One and currently ends at the Foundation for Blood Research. This is the site uh, that's currently under review um, that I'll, I'll get into the details for in a moment. But in the coming months, we'll be back uh, before you for subdivision amendment uh, and site plan approval for two additional developments, one of which will is planned to be a 36,000 square foot professional office building and a 5,000 square foot uh, office building likely um, down adjacent to Route 1. The, the entirety of this parcel will be converted into a, a condominium, so the, the lot lines will essentially go away and uh, it'll, be, it'll be managed as a, a condominium. So again, that's just for some context and helping you understand why we made some of the design decisions um, that we did in, in this, this proposal. So again, the, the existing building will be, um, will be expanded, but it will be expanded within its existing footprint. Um, there's a, a picture over here of the existing building um, today and the proposed building. So you can see much of this area will be filled in. So they'll be going up in height on about half the building. Um, so what's now kind of a, a two-story building in some areas and a one-story building in others will become a, a two-story building uh, with finished space in the basement as well. Um, as far as building design goes, uh, we did provide a, a rendering uh, with the application packet. So the siding, which is currently the painted pine clapboards, kind of in a diagonal pattern, will be replaced. Um, obviously, we're going for more of a, a modern look. So the, the siding um, is proposed to be metal panels. Uh, the wind, all the windows will be replaced. Um, quite a few windows will be added, uh, as well as um, some windows. Um, the, the, the window feature on the, that corner of the building um, that's similar to storefront glazing. On the north and south sides of the building, grade will be lowered about four feet to allow windows to be installed to, to let natural light um, into the basement as well into that ground floor as well to, to give uh, the occupants of that level a, a little better view um, out of that area. Currently there are um, sort of these window wells and it does allow light in, but certainly there's, there's definitely not a view out of that space uh, right now. Uh, vehicular access will be maintained. Currently there are two um, driveways off Science Park Road into that site, so those will be maintained. Uh, much of the parking um, will be maintained. The parking lot will be um, resurfaced because it's in, in, uh, not in great shape. And then parking will be expanded. Like I mentioned earlier, there's about 44 spaces on the site today. We'll be adding 63. The proposal is to add 63 um, to get up to 107 spaces. The ordinance requires uh, a, a parking ratio of four spaces per thousand square feet of gross leasable area. The applicant owns uh, 71 U.S. Route 1, which is Elevation Center at the at the intersection of Science Park Road and Route 1, uh, and has experience with with an office building very similar to use, and has experience with that type of development and feels that the four spaces per thousand um, is too much. So um, he's proposing three and a half spaces per thousand square feet, which comes to that 107 spaces. And uh, there's a, an area in reserve on our plan for the 15 additional spaces that gets you up to the ordinance requirement of 122. The site's currently served by public water, 
public sewer, underground electric, all those will be maintained. Um, a new fire service will be installed from the main in uh, Science Park Road. Currently, the building is only partially sprinkler, sprinkled, um, but the, the renovated building will have a, a full sprinkler system, in which needs a, a, a six-inch fire service. So that will be installed, as well as gas service. Unitil will be installing gas um, from Route 1 up Science Park Road for this project, as well as for the, the others that we shared earlier. Uh, lighting um, will include a combination of pole mounted and building mounted LED fixtures, full cutoff fixtures. Um, we've provided a photometric <coughs> plan uh, within the plan set, and a new monument sign is proposed. Uh, at the, the first driveway entrance, which is the, the southern entrance off uh, Science Park Road. A new sign will also be installed down at, the, down at Route 1, at the, at the corner of Science Park Road and Route 1. It will it'll be similar to the existing sign um, that's out there for Elevation Center uh, today, and we've provided a, a sketch of that in the application as well. Uh, Stormwater runoff uh, will really follow existing patterns. Um, today it, it goes east um, sort of from uh, the, the 295 spur across the site down to um, there's a large wetland system in the eastern part of the, the site of the eastern part of the subdivision. It's actually across Science Park Road from this lot. There are no, um, there are no wetlands on lot two on this project site, but just across the street there is a large wetland system uh, that drains to the Nonsuch River. Uh, today stormwater runs there uh, and in the future it will continue to, to flow there. The one um, addition uh, proposed as part of this project is the installation of an underdrain soil filter. The project, um, it will uh, create about 14,000 square feet of new impervious area. Um, so in order to mitigate for that, the applicant is proposing a, an underdrain soil filter um, in the eastern portion of the site here, the low part of the site. Eventually all that uh, runoff from the entire site gets across Science Park Road through a, a series of existing culverts and no new culverts, no, no changes in, uh, in the, uh, to the existing culverts are proposed as part of the project. So truly the, the runoff patterns will, will be what they are today. <coughs> um, we received some comments, the ones that Jay alluded to just on Thursday, and I want to touch on those um, pretty quickly. We think we have a, a handle on most of them or they can be addressed pretty quickly. And the, probably the biggest one in my mind, or certainly one of the biggest, was um, a comment on uh, circulation, vehicle circulation. Uh, the, the plan, the original plan that was submitted had a, a dead end um, parking bay sort of near the, near the entrance to the site that included uh, 12 spaces. And uh, I think the comment was dead end parking is bad, and the ordinance actually limits dead end uh, parking to the 10 spaces. So we've, we've looked at that, we've reconfigured it. Um, it shows on this plan that we have in front of you here, and um, hoping to get uh, buy in from you tonight on at least the concept, and we can work out the details um, with staff. But parking, the, the parking bay that was here, that was dead end, has been connected now to the, the, the main drive. So now folks that pull into this parking area, um, if there is no parking, no, they don't have to back out. They can just continue through and loop, and loop around. So um, we feel that is a, um, feel that's a, an adequate solution to a, to a, a tight site and one in which um, obviously we're trying to create parking and 
uh, for the for the occupants of the of the building. Um, another comment on sign location. Um, we understand typically signs are subject to a 15-foot setback from property lines, uh, and this one is in fact over the property line. Um, it's it's close to uh, Science Park Road. As I mentioned before, the applicant owns all that land and will be coming back before the board uh, in the next uh, couple months to amend the subdivision to eliminate the lot lines and turn it into a condominium. So um, <coughs> we feel that uh, the sign location is appropriate for the location of the access um, as well as the, the configuration of the parking around there. So um, we hope you can Hope you, hope you can see that as well. Um, there was a question on architecture and the, the materials proposed to be used. I touched on that earlier. The, the materials are uh, will be metal panels. Uh, in the cover letter that I um, that I uh, submitted with the application, I mentioned I mentioned a cement board um, uh, siding, but in fact uh, the applicants sort of change their thoughts on that and they're going to an insulated metal panel. Uh, there was a comment on uh, traffic. The, essentially the traffic engineers um, are discussing uh, how to model existing traffic generation versus proposed traffic generation. They're trying to assign a, a value for traffic generated by the previous use and it all comes down to what was the previous use. Um, our traffic engineer, Bill Bray, um, uh, modeled the existing, or the, the, you know, the foundation for blood research as a medical office building. He feels that it meets that definition and uh, generates the number of trips uh, that goes along with a medical office building. And the, the engineers from Goral Palmer have asked for some additional information on that. So. Um, we feel it's we, we continue to feel that it's uh, a medical office building but in the end we just need to get the two traffic engineers to agree on what that use was uh, and the, the implications are really with the not with the design it won't change the design at all but it'll uh, it'll change the traffic impact fee really so if there's more of an increase in traffic it changes the, the, the traffic impact fee goes up and finally, the, uh, the engineers at Woodard and Kern reviewed the stormwater and um, made a comment on uh, sort of erosion control at the outlet end of those existing uh, culverts. And um, we're, we're confident we can put together some information, um, some additional information, additional analysis, and, and uh, improve the detail on that uh, to their satisfaction. So. Um, this is the first time you've seen this. Uh, we we feel it's a pretty simple project. It's a um, you know a parking expansion with building renovations. Really, uh, most of the existing infrastructure will remain. Um, there are a few outstanding comments, but we feel like um, they can be worked through um, with the review engineers and with staff. Hopefully, you're comfortable enough with that um, to feel the same way. The a the applicant's anxious to. Uh, get under construction uh, and, and get a tenant or multiple tenants in the building uh, as soon as possible. So uh, thank you for listening. Thanks for staying late tonight and uh, happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Is there any public comment? <laughs> <laughs> Do I dare ask? Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> you didn't bring all your followers? No. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so we, I'll just say at the outset, we do have some potential conditions of an approval jotted down here if we get to that point and there seems to be, that seems to be the sentiment of the board, but we'll see what folks have to say. Um, Susan, you want to start it off? Is what you said that you think that it's a possibility that we will give them a preliminary approval with conditions? Is that what you're saying? Oh, well, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be preliminary. It would be this is just a straight site plan 
site approval request. So, well, I mean, again, uh, well, all right. folks may feel differently, but at, at first blush or, or having looked over everything and, and listened, it sounds like a lot of the loose ends are sort of engineer to engineer type coordination, but. All right, let me ask a question then. Are we happy with what he shows there that I don't have here in terms of changes to the parking? So I'd say from what I'm seeing from here, we have a connection, so they uh, eliminated that dead end condition. And that was so the only real question to begin with, was that one part that was dead end? I think ended? that's the question. The one thing I did hear was about the sign. Um, you know, the code office can't, yeah. can't office a sign that's not code compliant. So I would say at this point, until we do have that subdivision amendment, this board doesn't have the ability to waive the sign location, so that's just something I want the applicant to be clear on. Good. At this point, we need to deal with that. I don't think that's going to be a big deal, given yeah, that you have other things, things going on. But um, thank you, because that's one of those but things. But outside that of that, I would say that you know, I think they've addressed by and large staff comments, mm -hmm. peer review comments. How about the percentage of landscaping provided within the parking lot? That was a question that we have not heard yet on, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, I, I can touch on that. And it's, you know, I was, I've been here before, as I'm sure most of you recognize me, and it's always something I struggle with on how to calculate that number, um, particularly with, with parking, single parking bays. Um, you know, when you get into multiple parking bays, if you think of a Hannaford parking lot, it's easy to kind of come up with that number where you've got landscape islands in the middle. but Clearly, this, all the parking is surrounded by landscaping um, in this. So, you know, in my opinion, uh, you consider the landscaping along the edges of, of this. Um, the one area where there are multiple parking bays, well, sort of side by side, we are providing uh, uh, a nine foot wide uh, landscape island with with vegetation in it, um, as well as some landscape islands at sort of various intervals there. So, um, if you're comfortable um, sort of with that, I'm I'm happy to put a number together uh, and put together an analysis and share it with staff. But I, I'm I'm confident that's going to be more than that 15 percent that is required by ordinance. Okay. Um, do you have a copy of the landscaping plan there that you can look at? I, I'm blind. And I so do. <laughs> so they give me the big full page. And I'm looking at um, the left side of the um, diagram. So <clears throat> if I look at the, the, the landscaping that you're going to be adding to what will be the, um, God, this is hard to read. Science Park Road, in that area up in there, I can see that there are trees that are going to be added, to, uh, coming up to the edge of the parking area. And I don't have any problems with that. If I go to the far left side, what am I looking at there? I mean, it, it's wooded. Yeah, on the far left side of the plan, so over here. Yep. So that's, this is, there's existing parking here today. Mm -hmm. So the, the existing parking is located here and here today. Right. This is an existing tree line, so that we're, we're just proposing this is all this is all wooded through here. So and, and uh, you can sort of see on the aerial photo that's underlaid here, the woods sort of continue. So and there's the no there's no new planting proposed. And where is it going to connect to the new, to the next um, construction? It will, yeah. So so the the I'll show you this again. So the next. The next project to come along will be will be this and this, um, and it's going to abut. I mean, so, so any landscaping that is put that would be put on this side will interfere with getting to the new. It may. So I envision a I envision a a landscape island between this parking this existing parking bay that's shown on this plan mm -hmm. and any and the next development over. Um, but I, I foresee that being sort of designed uh, okay. as part of the next project. Today, like I said, that exists, that's an existing tree line there and we're, we're maintaining it. 
just out of curiosity, I'm sure you said something, but I was, this is not my time of day. Um, the smaller of the two buildings that we're looking at here, what is it going to be used for? So um, I believe there's a tenant lined up, um, and they are, they're going to provide um, education, essentially, can I say who it is? I'm sorry, I didn't understand that. It, it, it's uh, Northeast Technical Institute. The shop. Okay. Um, I'm really not happy with the landscaping thing, but I understand that there's that that we're going to have a chance to look at this more globally as we go into the next stage two and stage three. Um, so the onus is on you for stage one to make sure that what you do is just spectacular. Um, question about the architecture. Where it is now one story, it's going to become three and a half. No, no, it's going to become three. But the roof line is not going to exceed the roof line of the present tall building. Am I correct? Correct. This is the existing. That's, a, that's the same height. And that's the, that's the same. Okay, good. <clears throat> this is. I want to see something about the materials. If we're going to give you preliminary or whatever, with, you know, I mean, I, I think that the board should get a chance to look at the materials, not just have it done with staff. Is that asking too much? At your discretion. My discretion says that looking at this, <coughs> I think that the fact that you put the windows on the corner and that you put this, um, I don't know what that, it's an enclosed walkway, I guess it is, between the existing, oh, it's there already. Okay, but it's going to be different windows? All the windows will be replaced. Okay. It's extremely boring really, really boring. And if we're going to use pre-made um, materials, we must be able to do something with maybe a different grading of it. You know, some of it goes this way, some of it goes this way. I don't know what I'm saying because I don't know what the product is. But I would like to see the product. And if you want to bring it into staff and staff calls just me, that's fine. <laughs> but I really would like, to, I would like to see what that's going to look like. Um, no comment on that. Okay. Lighting. Did we discuss lighting? The confirmed um, cutoff, the control glare. Did we, did we discuss that? So the, all the fixtures will be full cutoff. I, I can provide okay. uh, additional And we, we agree that the signage thing will come <coughs> in the, when we take a look at the um, site plan, full site plan approval, right? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? No. <laughs> The sign will not be will not be. The, the sign needs to meet zoning. Um, so the zoning. board the board can't approve it within the existing private way. Okay. Uh, right. There so, you go. So we will today. I will commit to meeting the 15 foot setback, and uh, okay. we will propose to change it uh, during right. the next round of permitting. Okay. Sure. I'm all set as long as I get a chance to see the materials. Thank you. Thank you. Roger? Uh, yes. Um, I actually, I, li I like everything I've seen so far. Uh, I think the building looks like a medical building. Um, and I, you, you did a great job with the old, um, you know, with the elevation uh, building. And I think you did the Nonsuch Plaza too, right? Now, do you own the Science Parkway? Okay, because I know there was a dispute at one time over that, right? Yeah. So that's good. And I'm very pleased with what your your total plans for the for the whole area. Um, I think you've answered a lot of you know most of the questions that I had talked down, so I'm not going to belabor belabor anything. But I I basically don't have any problem with the building. I think it looks fine. And I'm all set. Thank you. Nick? I, too, am okay. And there's that parking plan you're representing up there on the board is better than 
dead end of the one we have in the packet. Uh, I'm good with the design that I see here. All set. Thank you. Robin? Um, like Ms. Oglis, I, I see a few things missing, including an erosion and sedimentation control plan. Um, I noticed on page six of the stormwater management report that you say that uh, the plan has been developed and uh, will be provided in the details, including on the project drawings. I'm looking at these details. I don't see enough here for an erosion sedimentation control plan. Sheet 6-2. I don't have sheets, too. That's the erosion sedimentation control narrative in details. Sheet 6-2. I don't have it. Would you like to borrow mine? Um, that may be one of the sheets that doesn't go in your standard packet but gets in, put in Dropbox. So. I was just going to say so. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, let's table that for just a moment. Um, I would like to ask, what's, what's, you're, you're noticing that there's, um, first of all, what watershed are we in here? None such. None such river, okay. So we've talked about some, have you been here the whole night? Uh, in and out. In and out, okay. <laughs> we've talked about none such and some aggregate impacts that are happening here. So talk to us about um, what, what increases you're seeing to <coughs> runoff from the site to the wetlands that are part of the floodplain system that basically control the flooding in this area of the Nonsuch River? Sure. Um, so we, we are, we did study uh, peak flows from the site. Let me yep. sort of look at an overall plan because yep. it helps, helps a little bit. And like I mentioned earlier, the site sort of drains um, east, northeast. Um, there's the central main power company easement here, and, then, and the Nunsuch River is um, not far past here. Obviously, most of you know, I'm sure, if you drive uh, north on Route 1, you cross the Nunsuch um, sure. right up the road there. I'm, I'm specifically talking about page 5, Mike, if you wouldn't mind, in your stormwater management report. Mm -hmm. We're looking at uh, peak flow increases of about 30% for mm -hmm. each of these, 2, 10, and 25 years. Mm -hmm. So are you, is there any way, have you also calculated the peak volume, like, you know, what the volume is that's going to run off? Is that on, in here? No, we didn't. We okay. Didn't volume. Okay, so um, uh, do you have any way to attenuate this? Well, we are attenuating it in the in the soil filter a bit. Which soil filter? The underdrain so proposed underdrain soil filter. Okay, and when you modeled that, mm -hmm. were you taking into account the amount of treatment that the existing trees provide on this site, and that that is being taken away, and then? aggravated with all the additional impervious area. Yeah, we do actually. Okay. We, we obviously you, you modeled ground cover. I don't know how familiar you are with stormwater modeling, but you, we modeled the existing ground cover as wooded area. Right. Um, which, you know, how accurately does that take it into account? I don't know, as accurately as, as uh, you know, the, the but what we're underlying equations um, do. but. Um, yeah, so we, we look at existing ground cover and, and proposed ground cover, and so I believe that does take that into account. Okay. Um, and how much additional impervious are you talking about here? About 14,000 square feet. Yeah, and the other large. sort of concern that I have, too, is that you're hovering right near one acre of disturbed area. Mm -hmm. Where is your contractor laydown area going to be on the site? Uh, you might want to include that in your calculations. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, really, the the, whole, the site is anything that's not disturbed is really wooded. So. Okay. Um, uh, do you get what I'm getting at here? Is that any uh, increase is going to sort of set this off, and you're gonna, it's going to set you into the need to have what happens if you exceed one acre permitting, new right. permitting, and the like kind of a thing. So I don't. You're absolutely like right. I mean, th this. This project is going to be rolled into the DEP permit for the um, for for this sort of overall master plan. So um, we're we're meeting with DEP in the next couple yeah. weeks to review that, anyways. Um, so th this project, this actually this project will become part of.
part of that stormwater permit. Yeah, and I also didn't, you know, and, and with that, I think the need for a long-term maintenance plan for BMPs and maybe even landscaping, I think, is the need, and I didn't see that in here, so well, that's I'm need. not feeling comfortable moving forward, but I could be the only person, so. Yeah. And I, I apologize for in the rushing. It was in the stormwater report. Right, and so I apologize for rushing, but it's just the hour, and I apologize for being curt. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're all set, Rachel? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with Susan I, in terms of the building is both certainly better than it was before, the, the new plan, and not quite exciting. Um, so as I'm looking at it, and you seem to have uh, panels horizontal, is that correct? Yes. Okay. The horizontal, no, excuse me, you have the panels vertical. that are vertical. I think they're going to be vertical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so it would be possible to occasionally vary the color, perhaps the, along the line of the windows, uh, and provide something that looks like a, almost a shadow effect by, by darkening some of the, some of the panels. And that would, I think, provide some more interest and a little, just a little more pizzazz. Uh, other than that, I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Uh, I'm last, and I do, and I still have questions. Um, one thing I have a question on is the traffic study, because you spoke to that a little bit. And you know, in here I read because they're changing. They're changing the use from a, or potentially the discussion is around changing the use from a medical building to a general office building. Mm -hmm. But then there was some discussion that it was going to be used for like educational facility. Um, so I would like to see some clarification on the, on the traffic study. And I know that seems like there's some discussion on it right now, but I don't know if what type of medical office it was. I'm not very familiar with it and how many trips it would have generated, mm -hmm. but um, depending on what the purpose of it or what it's being repurposed for, if it was just a general office where people came in at 9 o'clock in the morning and they stayed till 5 and they went home, that's, you know, you can kind of figure your traffic off of that. But if it's something where students are, I was a student at USM and I went back and forth 20 times a day. Um, so, and I wasn't a great student. <laughs> um, I got a degree. I got paid for it. Um, so the traffic study is definitely something that I'd like to take a look at. And then, um, and I'm not usually hard on this, but this, the, the, I would like to see more than what I have in front of me, and maybe I missed something. And, but as far as the elevation goes, it doesn't really, I don't really get a great feeling of what this building's going to look like. Mm -hmm. um, and I know it's not right on the beaten path, but I think you can see that from the highway, right? I mean, you can give or take. I uh, just, through the, there's a part of standard trees, but it, but you can if you. Okay. I'd like to see something. Um, I, I know it's, it looks like it's going to be a really nice looking building, but I can't really get the feel for that. Yeah. Hey, do have. you have the rendering as well? I don't have other than yeah, but that's just one, one view, screen? right? Right. It is just one view. Correct. It's one view, and it's almost looked like it's that my little my six year old could have done that with a with a. It's not. It's not. It doesn't give me the kind of. Um, it's a nice. It's a nice view. It, it would. I would like to see like maybe the different sides of the building too. But um, okay. It's just a little bit different than what I'm kind of used to seeing. Um, and then the last thing maybe is um, you're increasing the size of the building from 20. 6,000 to 30,000? 33, yep. 33. So, again, that kind of goes back to the traffic study. If you're, if you're actually 
If you're making the building smaller, I could see where traffic might go down. Uh, but if you're making it bigger, it would seem to make sense that it would go up. Now, again, I really, that I'd leave that to the traffic engineers. I, it may come back and it may be less traffic, but I'd like to see more details. Yeah, so I, I, can, I can touch a little on that. Sure. And I'm not a traffic good. engineer, but um, I can uh, sort of share with you what's in, a little bit what's in the, uh, the assessment that Bill Bray did. So he did take into account um, that, the, that the, what's now a maintenance building will become a training facility. So essentially when he does it, he, he, there's a use and then a size. So um, I think he, everyone, at least the, the, the peer reviewer, I think agreed with Bill's assessment uh, mostly. The only thing he questioned was um, what was the use of the former facility? And I think he, he, he needed a little more information on um, on how it was used. You know, I think a typical medical office facility um, would be, you know, a doctor's office or a hospital where th they're seeing patients in and out all day. And I think there was a question uh, about whether or not they, they were seeing patients there. And so we've we've gotten some uh, information from the former owner uh, on that. And um, uh, and again, that's something for. It also comes down to how the ITE, the Institute of Traffic Engineers. Um, defines these uses, so um, that it, hopefully they can agree on on uh, how that existing building can be classified, and then they can assign um, you know, trips to to that previous use. Okay, and you know traffic's not real bad in that area, so I'm not overly concerned with the traffic. It would be more of you know everybody that comes in here has to do a traffic study, and and they have to pay their fair share, so whatever it comes out to be, it comes out to be, but yep. I'd just like to feel better about how you, how the numbers were put together. Uh, and then do, you, do you folks see the, the traffic study? Yeah, we have, we get the traffic okay. studies. Okay. Yeah, there it is. There, I look, that's the thing I look at most actually, because I like the numbers. <laughs> um, I can figure them out better than the siding. But, um, yeah, I mean, that rendition's fine. I, I didn't mean to be uh, negative, it's, but it's mm. just uh, not quite what we're used to seeing. Is your six-year-old available to do? Uh, What's that? Is your six-year-old available to do maybe the other side? <laughs> I know. <laughs> she's actually 23 now. Oh. Okay. But she is an excellent, she is an excellent, she's actually an excellent artist, so it does look like something she could have done. I'm not the architect, so I, I won't. All right. <laughs> all right, well, hopefully we're all still friends. <laughs> um, so, yes, it is late. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think coming into this, I was sort of on the fence about maybe leaning toward uh, putting forward a, a motion for conditional approval. Um, however, based on sort of the the sort of the aggregate effect of the, of the discussion here tonight. Um, um, I'm just not quite, not quite feeling it. Um, I think part of it, part of what you're hearing and part of what I'm sensing myself and from listening to others is that um, as, as good a shape as this is in overall for a sort of a first, uh, first pass in front of us, it is the first time we've seen it. And so, you know, we get to a, certain tipping point and it's hard to say exactly where it is on any given project where over that beyond that point it's just you know too you know too many loose ends um, so um, hopefully you know folks can understand that and I, I think um, you know given the track record and and given what you've done to this point I'm fully confident that <coughs> that with the next next iteration will probably be there and if I had a chance to Sort of digest some of the stormwater details a little bit more. Um, maybe get um, some additional uh, the additional uh, sort of fleshed out renderings and some sure. material samples. Uh, in terms of the architecture, I'm I'm in the camp um, that says you know this is a, a medical building and I don't think we need to make it exciting. Um, I, I I think you know there are certain certain districts and certain areas where we have to really space 
pay special attention to certain applicable design standards and other things. Um, I think in this case, you know, this is this is very honest architecture. It, it's modern. It is what it is. Um, I think it's a you know it's a net improvement over what's there. So I'm not necessarily opposed to it, and I I'm, I don't personally feel that we need to get too into the weeds on doing your architecture, but um, I think it'll benefit everyone to see a little bit more going sure. forward and to the extent that you want to revisit certain things your architect does, then uh, by all means do so. Um, but with that, um, you know, I don't think I have anything more to add really. Uh, I appreciate you making the change on the parking lot and your explanation about the, the interconnectivity and, and sort of the phasing. So um, is there any other feedback knowing that you're going to need to go back and do a little more homework, any more feedback that you can use from us? Uh, no, it's not, well, from what I hear, yeah, architecture is the, the piece, so we'll, we'll work on some um, maybe additional renderings of the other sides of the building um, and, and get some more information on, on materials. But it, is a sample possible, Bob? Yeah, okay. I also think, however, if I may, that the whole business about the stormwater management is not clear to me. And I don't know whether it re requires a separate p page that explains it better, clearer drawings or whatever. But it doesn't feel it doesn't feel done to me. Yeah, I mean it's been. I I hear the um, the questions from Ms. Saunders, and um, it has been peer reviewed by um, by the folks over at okay. uh, Woodard and Curran. So if there's here's the thing. Next time you come, we'll put you number one. On the agenda, That'd and we'll be great. all be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, <laughs> and we'll be able to understand yeah. it better. Okay, good. And we do appreciate you waiting all night <laughs> to have this conversation. Appreciate, appreciate so. you guys sticking around as well. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. <coughs> staff report, Jay. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it brief, given the hour. Um, just an update on the Higgins Beach character code um, audit process. The Long Range Planning Committee, working with our consultants and staff, we're having an open house this Sunday from 10 to 1 at the Higgins Beach Association Clubhouse. Um, so encourage planning board members and members from the public to attend and let us know your thoughts. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. Any administrative amendment report? Do not have anything to report. Uh, any planning board correspondence? You know, anything that we may have all received in our packets? Okay. Planning board comments? I have one. Um, Go ahead, Robin. Thanks. Um, I'm going to keep it brief, but I think we've seen a couple things this evening. Um, that demonstrate, I think, the need for us to think about as a planning board or as a community how we want to um, consider a mechanism for eliminating, minimizing, or, or managing somehow the off-site impacts with respect to stormwater management and how those mm -hmm. aggregate impacts um, can potentially catch up to us in the end. And I think. Um, to any event or to the, to, the, to the extent that we can minimize the compelling public testimony um, like Mr. White of Spring Street, Spring Street had tonight, I would encourage us to think about a mechanism or a way to do that, whether it's a stormwater impact fee, just like they pay for traffic, so that people aren't paying, the first person in pays as much as the last person in. Otherwise, you know, we're going we're gonna to end up having um, the last person in to pay for sins of the past kind of a thing. I think we've um, also seen some some very good clustered development. I'm thinking of the Redbrook um, headwaters up on New Road in those areas. We've seen some clustered development there, and in Washington Ave, so um, in the industrial park area there. So, and tonight was the Nunsuch River time. So I want us to just all think about these clustered developments and how, for example, Science Park Road, um, the last one here, was a 30% increase to peak flows that's running off their site, okay? That equates to a lot of volume that can go to somebody else's basement. Good thing the floodplain to the nonsuch is right there. Compared to, let's look at um, 
the 79 county road site where there was 0% change in stormwater runoff. They're basically mitigating everything on site. So how is it fair that those folks who are mitigating everything on site are getting similar approvals to the folks who allow who are allowing 30% peak flow? So I'll just leave you all with that and how we can deal with that as a community. I'd like to make a comment on that. I would like to suggest that we bring that concept one way or the other to the Long Range Planning Committee right. because it's an excellent point. I'm too tired to do any more than just say I don't want to forget Me about too. it. Me too. And I think that is a good segue to what my comment was going to be, which is about the, the recent kickoff to the, to the um, comprehensive plan update. And, um, you know, it was, there were a couple of different events last week which were very, I thought, very well attended. Um, and um, I think that those, uh, those sorts of considerations are things that, you know, transcend mm -hmm. you know, individual ap approvals that we consider and, right. and as we think about strategic growth areas and things like that, as you mentioned, that has to be part of the mix. And there have been some very clear voices who have spoken about the importance of <coughs> protecting the marsh and those other resources that are mm -hmm. in some cases very close to the center of town. So I encourage people to stay up to speed on that and participate in that. Rachel? Yeah, I, I have something else that sort of goes to this in terms of thinking ahead, and, and that is Haggis Parkway and the traffic on it. Um, as we get the Gateway Commons in there, and now we've got um, the application for the gym, I, I, I saw at one point that the traffic uh, engineer had indicated that there was a 15-second wait um, to get into a left turn. Uh, I'm not sure when that study was done because when I tried to get out of Scotto Hill Road on a left turn uh, at the, um, in during the evening traffic hour or in the morning rush hour, it's an awful lot longer than 15 seconds. It's, it's a long wait. And there's been a noticeable increase in the traffic there because the traffic really is now being pushed down uh, Haggis Parkway uh, towards Route 1. And at some point we are going to run into some real traffic issues there. Uh, and we're early in that development, so the time to think about that is, is now. Um, before all of a sudden we it, it all picks up and we get, you know, four applications in to put something in there. It was repaved a couple of years ago. I think Karen has something. Yeah, I just wanted to ask that tonight you put your materials back in your bag to distribute the weight carrying them down the stairs. So oh. Okay. Please. What are we putting back in the bag? I'll have to take your recyclable sure. stuff. I'll clean all the bags. All right. Usually I throw it all in one. All right. With that, I move uh, to adjourn. All in favor? Yes. Unanimous.